that you could get some shine from, man. This gonna be one of the saddest days in hip hop. But then again, it might be one of the holiest days in hip hop because if they make Mace put his hand on the Bible, he gonna have to decide if he want to be a pastor or murder Mace. Cause people already know what happened. He talking about he had 70 bloods in the hotel room and he was scared to leave the night that big got killed. But the truth of the matter is, if they wanted to get you, you would have got got. But the reason why he ain't get got is because Diddy needed him more than ever. He was Biggie's replacement. The same way when Dame Dash wanted to get rid of Jay-Z, he bought in Cameron and made him the president of Rockefeller. Jigga wasn't going for it because he seen what Diddy did with Mace and come to find out Mace and Cameron is like best friends. So when you see them join your label, that mean that it's game over for your ass. Jay was able to dodge that bullet cause he was going to be damned before he ended up like Biggie. Now Mace is running his mouth and people is asking questions, a bunch of questions he may not be willing to answer, but the more he talk, it's starting to look like he was Biggie's replacement. And it's a possibility allegedly he's the reason why Biggie lost his life that night, man. So a lot of people in New York, been hitting my phone and asking me to do this video because Mason Betha is rolling in dough. Cameron is by his side. He's speaking on Biggie's death like him and Biggie had a close relationship, but the truth is a lot of people was waiting for Biggie to die. And if it wasn't for Big losing his life, Mace wouldn't have been able to fill his slot. Jay-Z ain't start popping off like that until Biggie was out of the picture. Nobody was going to listen to the locks, a three man group on some De La Soul gangster vibes. Oh if it were for Biggie losing his life, Lil' Kim wouldn't have been able to do all them solo albums and messing her face up because Big wouldn't have been going for none of that, man. He said he was trapped in the hotel room with a bunch of bloods waiting outside. If they wanted to knock that door down, and hang him over the balcony or do whatever they wanted to do. It wasn't nothing that could stop him. Listen at this, y'all. You're ready. So I, I, it's a two part question. Is one question. Yeah. There's a bunch of questions. I, I had a hashtag ask Mace. The night that Biggie Small died, where were you and what did you do in the aftermath right after Biggie Small died? Hmm. Where was I? I was in the hotel. What people? That sound like a Keefy D question. <laughs> no, they, they didn't say you was involved. They to, <laughs> yeah, I guess they knew everybody from Bad Boy was out there. Oh yeah, I was in the hotel. I was actually in the hotel with, with a young lady. And when you heard this information, what did what was your next actions? My next actions. What after, after what? When you heard Biggie died, did you stay in your hotel room? Did you leave out? Did you um, want to go back I to New actually, York? Actually, I actually was. Trapped in a hotel. Now I want to ask the question. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean trapped? It was Yo, before he even answered that question, man, if you was trapped in the hotel and it was 70 bloods outside, nine times out of 10, they was there for your protection. And it's only one man with that much pull to have people looking out for you, had you in a fortress because he had your best interests at heart. Diddy decided that he found somebody that he can actually run with. He damn sure wasn't gonna be able to run with Biggie much longer. He could barely get up on the boat. They tried to do an action video and Biggie was on the cane the whole time and Diddy ain't even had the strength to try to run from no helicopters and shit. The hypnotized video was very hypnotizing because Puff standing next to the fat man had him looking all types of crazy and he couldn't wait to replace him with Mace. Him and Mace been around the world and yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as Biggie was gone, he felt more comfortable in the studio with him. Somebody with a lower IQ. It was the perfect match. He was trapped in the hotel and he couldn't go nowhere. He looking out the window, all them bloods out there throwing up gang signs and shit. 
Well, how in the hell he got out of there the next day? He tiptoeing out the hotel, all them bloods in the hallway sleep with 40 ounces in their hands. I don't believe none of this shit, man. Yo, Reg, go on and finish playing that, man. This is heartbreaking because he's sitting up there lying. It was about probably like 70, 70 or so bloods in the, in the hallway. I couldn't even leave my room. How'd you get out? Um, one of the, the guys. Why would it be 70 bloods in your hallway after Biggie Smalls died? Um, actually, after Big got killed, they was probably looking for more bad boy artists. And I couldn't even leave the room to um, Gene Dill, the one the officer came, had to come get me. He said, man, this is the thing about it, man. It's a reason why he became a pastor. He couldn't live with the guilt and the fact that he the reason why Big is no longer here. Yo, Reg, open up them phone lines, man, because somebody need to call in and answer this question. He gave his life to the Lord. He couldn't stand it another second. You up here shining, getting all this love off of the back of another man that paved the way for you. Jada Kiss, Styles P, Sheik Luch, Black Rob Shine, Jay-Z, the whole Rockefeller. Y'all feasted when this man passed. Y'all enjoyed the spoils of war after Tupac and Biggie passed away, man. And that type of pressure on his shoulders made him crack. He couldn't take it another day. Got them chains on it. He know them chains belong to Big, man. Make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Also hit that notification button. Yo, we got a phone call right now. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Hello? Hey, Sean, how are you? Oh, I'm doing amazing. How you doing over there? I'm doing great. How are you today? Oh, man, I'm chilling. We talking about this situation with Mace. He in the news talking about the night Biggie died. He was trapped in the hotel room. 70 Bloods was out there growling. And he finally made it out alive. Like Diddy didn't have his best interest at heart. Like he wasn't the one to replace Biggie. Do you feel like Mace is the reason why Big is no longer alive? I mean, see, you you said it already. He turned it past us. So, I mean, what has happened had happened. So, just, I mean, just pay him that. Real talk, ma. Everything you said ain't nothing but facts. And what else you got to say about this whole situation? I mean, Pac is dead. Pac is dead. I mean, the living is living. So, I mean, they caught the kill already. So, uh, what else we got to say? Just keep living. But what I'm trying to explain to people is the only reason why Mace is living is because Biggie is dead. And that's why he feel so heartbroken and torn up inside. Don't know if he want to be God or the devil. Oh my <laughs> he doesn't know if he want to be blood or, or be a Sean brother. I mean, you could work on him though. Which one are you, Sean? You know what? I don't know if we talking Patois, English. You got a little bit of Spanish going on. But one thing for sure, I love you to death because you called in and that make my heart smile. And we got mad people in the comment section leaving comments. Do you mind if I take a little bit of time to show them some love real quick, Ma? Uh, no problem at all. You have a good day. No doubt. You, you have a good day as well. I wasn't trying to get off the phone, but if you got to go, then you got to do what you got to do, man. Every time we get on the phone, you act like it's something very important that you got to do besides talking to me. But that's all right, though. I'm going to let you do what you got to do. And make sure next time I go live, you call in. You heard? Always, always, my brother. No doubt, beautiful. Care. All right, you take care, too. Real talk. All right, man, you be good. Goodbye. All right, take care. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Yes, this is Miss Mayoris from Alabama. Oh, that's what it is, my All the way from Alabama. The floor is all yours. What you got to say about the situation? Well, the thing about it is that these people are ruthless people. People must understand how they make their living was wrong. They had flooded the generation. They killed Tupac to hush him up. Mm -hmm. He was telling you about how they was going to make the girls, boys and the boys girls. All this has came. All of them have billionaire boyfriends. They ruined, they ruined Prince. They did. That's right. They did all of that stuff that you just said, man. You figure now that these rappers is getting old, 
they starting to talk, but they talking to everybody talking a little too much and people listening like don't none of this make no sense. It's either all of them lying or the truth is stranger than fiction. Because as far as Mace being trapped in the hotel room with 70 bloods while Biggie getting killed, why wasn't he at the party with Big? Well, he was not there because he planned it. If we're big and two pop, like you said, they pocket the Jesus and he a pop. Mm. And without, if he would have stayed here, they would be nobody. Yo. They, they need nobody. to be busted start at the top. That's real talk. And you know, another thing, real talk. And the crazy and, part about it, and what you said, Mom, my bad, go ahead. And as far as Puff Daddy, y'all talking about Mace couldn't come out the hotel because Puff had probably done raped him or something. You know he gay. Shit. Clyde Davis is his old man. That's how he got all his power. They need to go out to Clyde Davis. That's who they need to go after because he's because that's why Whitney did. That's what they do, move people out the way so they can move up. Because if these people would have lived, they would not have had nothing. That's real talk. And you know, they always do a tribute song. As soon as one of them die, oh, I miss you. And that shit be going platinum, selling all them records before you know it. Like, oh, I know who that is. They did that song for Biggie. Just like the locks and all them other dudes. If it wasn't for Big losing his life, they wouldn't even be famous. Give me my flowers while I'm alive. Yup. Because they wouldn't get no flowers. If them people was alive, Biggie and Tupac, now I love pop. I'm a, I'm a hip hop from the hip hop generation. Real Ever talk. since Snoop and Biggie got on that plane long time ago, Suge was there. He put Snoop on the plane with his enemies when Snoop hit the ground. I always knew Snoop was behind Tupac murder. I always the quill. And people need to scratch what these gangs are about. These gangs is trouble. They they got their money robbing, stealing, and killing. That's not good. Snoop won't turn loose the bloods and quills because he's a quill. Wonders why he had behind Martha Stewart. They done had billionaire boss friends that increased their power. But they need to go out to everybody. Every lead for two parts, they need to go to jail. I want them in jail. They don't need to make another dialogue. Every last one of them deserve to be sitting in jail. Even them bloggers that be sitting there recording these people admitting to murders and stuff. They just as guilty as the killers. That's right. So it's time for them to go until they leave. If he'll probably have to die, let it die. With them, without them. Because I knew back in the day when Prince turned and changed his body around, they messed Prince up and they let me know. That's what you got to do. You got to be homosexual, willing to do anything, and use a robot. And they rob you. Everything you said ain't nothing but fire and nothing but facts. And that's why I got to thank you so much, my sister, for calling in. Because we needed that conversation. There's a lot of people out here too afraid to keep it real. But you're not one of them people. And that's why I want you to be no stranger. You call back whenever you feel like it, my real talk. Right. No doubt. We're going to holler at you later. You be good. Break it down. Yeah, man. The streets is talking. The more Mace talk, the more we going to talk. And it's looking like he may be the reason why Big got taken up out the game. Diddy got tired of being with the fat man. He wanted somebody he could really get around the world with. He was tired of waiting on Big, always showing up late, smoking out the studio. And plus both of these dudes from Harlem. So they know a thing or two about each other's environment the same way Cameron and Dame Dash is from Harlem and Jay-Z from Brooklyn like Biggie so they like hell if we can do it without these Brooklyn dudes that's what we gonna do they moved on big and as far as Lil' Kim go she might have been the grimiest one of them all cause she witnessed him leave her for a light skinned chick and what she do? She turned around, start bleaching her skin real bad. Because Big made her feel like doodle. -doo. He left her for Faith Evans, man.
then he turned around and started messing with Charlie Baltimore. It don't get no lighter than that. Gave that woman a complex. Now she's stuck. And in order to get him back, she sided with Diddy too. Who the? Hello, hello. Who this is, man? Hey, what's up? This is Eric, Youngstown, Ohio. Oh, what it do? We got Eric from the old town in the building, man. What it do? Ohio, stand up. Yo, whatever you got to say, the floor is yours, brother. Hey, uh, you know, not much, man. I don't think Mace had nothing to do with that, man. As far as we know that night, Puff might have played his demo for Biggie, and Biggie shot his own self when he heard that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I don't think Mace had nothing to do. Man, Mace had everything to do with it. You remember back in the day when Mace started popping and all the girls were screaming? Biggie ain't had that reaction from the ladies. Oh, Did really, man? Really, Mace wasn't, you know, we ain't even really hear about Mace till after Big Pass. You know what I'm saying? Come so, all you want to. Like Come all you want to. Baby, I'm going to front you. Cause I'm going to stunt you. On the 112 with Biggie on the track. Mace shitted on Biggie on the whole gone. damn track. B Biggie was standing was right there gone. in the video. 112, Biggie and Mace. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to get on YouTube and you look know at what, that. Man, even... You know, this is this the thing about it, bro. People be calling in, and y'all don't even be hip-hop heads like that. Y'all be going off of um, Tasha K or whatnot. You probably ain't even know nothing about Biggie before you heard me do these videos. Hey, I'm going to keep it a buck with you, man. Big wasn't in that 112 video. He wasn't in it. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't in it. They, his voice was, but he wasn't in it. Bro, I pulled the video up. It got 112, Biggie and Mace. They, at, they in Times Square doing the video. Biggie did his verse first. Mace came in with the hum all you want to, come all you want to. How you not going to know that? So you're going to say Mace killed this cat just so him and Diddy could do a, uh, do a song again. You know what I'm saying like, or do an album, or have his uh, so non-existent career. Mace ain't really been hot until he came out with this show with Cam. You know what I'm saying? He had a couple of joints, but that was about it. Like, you know, so you know, in, in that case, to make that argument, man, Biggie died in vain. You know what I'm saying? If Mace had something to do with it, you said Mace just got hot because he got a show with Cam on my G. Yeah, like actually, really known, you know. So ain't nobody Back know who Mace day. was until he got the on um, podcast with Cameron. Oh, they knew who he was, but he wasn't really popping. He Mace was wasn't popping with the bend around the world and all that. For a minute. For a minute. That was about it. Oh Just for goodness. a minute. But it wasn't like, you know, he didn't have the longevity that uh he wasn't like it wasn't like he was black rock. It wasn't even like he got the same shine that Shine did. So you, you know saying, saying that Mace. Black Rob and Shine was bigger artists than Mace? Hey man, you got you got to talk to me in lowercase letters, man. Bro, you, know you ain't I'm making no damn sense. It's hard for me to contain myself when you ain't making no sense whatsoever. Then you got the nerve to be sensitive on top of that. First of all, you don't know what you're talking about. Then you got the nerve to cry about it. I gotta <laughs> talk to you in lowercase letters. <laughs> He over there clutching on his pearls and all that, man. Either hit that cash app. The dollar sign right, Sean plays docs, brother. I appreciate you so much. And please don't be no stranger. Get you a box of napkins or something, man. You got me mad because you mad. <laughs> Talk hey, to man. me and so lower. Love, I got him. He want me to whisper. <laughs> Excuse me. You, you don't know what you're talking about. M M Mace was a bigger star than Black Rob and and Sheik Looch. All right, man, I asked for this one. Yeah, you sure did, man. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, <laughs> yeah. but we love you anyway, bro. And make sure you call back whenever you feel like it. Real talk. Yo, hello, hello. Ooh. Who this is, man? What's going on, man? This is All Day With It. All w -I -T -I -T. Day With It is in the building. Hey, brother, the floor is yours. Whatever you got to say, we all is, my brother. All right, so, you know, I'm just processing this. I, I got, you know, a real life. I don't be out and about looking at media, so on and so forth. Like the show, seen you come up from back when you didn't have no subscribers and all that. I remember it. Real talk. See, see you doing good now. I appreciate that. Don't forget to check out Ghetto Cable, y'all. Search Ghetto Cable, subscribe. But something that I don't think anybody's looking at, and y'all might need to have special legs. Man, hit the here. cash app for the plug, bro. 
Cause you tried to oh, finagle and wiggle all up in there with that fast talk, <laughs> trying to give me praises and accolades, and then threw your shit down, and then gonna step on my platform, which is zipper down and all. I don't appreciate that, bro. It's dollar sign Sean Blaze Docs. I got you. I, I, I got you. I got you. But look, look, I got something that everybody's missing. I'm, I got that piece of the puzzle. Mm-hmm. Check this. Check this out. What about? Like Special Ed said with NWA talking about the, uh, you know, CIA, FBI infiltrating our stuff, whatnot. You know, what if this is a ploy? Think about it. Diddy just built up this whole big thing, and now uh, he's got he's got all kind of shit going on. So to take him out, you know, that would just make sense. The sensationalism of all of this, what could be, all of the rumors that spread around for all of these years, Let's use that to the advantage. This is how we could take Diddy out. We're going to put this nigga, oh, yeah, he want attention. Yeah, we're going to put him in jail. You, you know, it, it seems like there's an agenda. You understand what I'm saying? No doubt. But as far as Mace go, talking about his life was also in danger tonight when Big died. What about during the daytime? When they was out at the basketball games with the dog pound, when they was running around chasing chicks, him and Stevie J. So as soon as the nighttime hit, and um, Osiris, welcome to the choir, bro. You over there listening to that good preaching. We appreciate you, brother. I'm All I'm saying is Mace trying to make it seem like they was really trying to get at him. But if they was, he would have got got. Ain't no hotel doors going to stop them gangsters from coming in there and trying to get you. You made a good point. Whenever that other dude was talking, he didn't know shit. You know, he was talking about Black Rob or some shit like that being bigger than Mace. At the time, I don't think Mace was that... Mace wasn't that back then. Like, niggas wasn't looking for Mace. <laughs> you know what I'm Yo, Y'all make it seem like he wasn't in the videos all day, every day. BET, Rap City, MTV with the shiny suits on, with the with the Lambos that was, that was, and all that. That was after that. That was after Big got killed. I understand that. But he was a big star. A very, very okay, big star. I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah, you, you like, yo, Puffy from Harlem. He from Harlem. Let's get this Brooklyn nigga the fuck out of here. And, and then we get, you know, I get it. I understand what you're saying. But still, man, I don't know, man. I don't know. At this point, it's all speculation. And Puff, right now, regardless what kind of parties he having, whatever the fuck, he putting niggas in position for a lot of opportunity. You understand what I'm saying? So, with that being said, it would make sense for the powers that be to come after this man. And don't forget, all day with it. New album coming soon. W I T I T. All day with it. I got you on that Dollar cash Dollar sign app, Sean Blaze Docs. Can you say that? Can you plug that? Yeah, yeah. Dollar signs, man. I got yeah, you. I got yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Did y'all hear? Did he just say, yeah, yeah? Am I hearing things? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. I sent it. It's, it's on the way. The nerve of this nigga. And we appreciate you, brother. Don't be no... Ooh, get them colors and them hearts and shit off the screen. We appreciate you, brother. Don't be no stranger. Make yeah, sure yeah, you I call back. Too, no man. doubt, man. Yo, no hey. doubt. Don't be no stranger. Make sure you call back. No doubt, bro. Uh, you be good, man. Enjoy your weekend, too. All right. Holla at you, man. You. No, doubt, you. no doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Hold on, yeah. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Hey, Sean, this is Selena calling out of Brooklyn. Oh, my God. Calling all the way from the BK. Whatever's on your mind, no doubt. We listening (laughs) real hard. Go ahead. Talk that talk. You know, I'm reading where it says, no, Mace isn't the reason that Biggie lost his life. Um, When I was watching the Dream Champs, I can't remember which rapper was on there. Biggie was leaving Bad Boy to start his own label. I can't remember which rapper was on Dream Champs. He said that the day before, two days before Biggie lost his life, he went to Biggie's home, to the studio, to do a freestyle for Biggie. Biggie would sign him on the spot. When Biggie was supposed to be coming back from California, he was supposed to be getting on the label. So you, you what know it was, who said Puffy, that? My, and not to cut you off, that was mm-hmm. Cam that said that. And Mace, the one that bought Cam to Biggie because he looking like shit, Biggie to come up. Like, if you want to get right. on, you got to go through him. They was using this man like, hell, if you want to shot at anything, I'm going to bring my mans up here. I'm going to bring my other little mans like Big. Listen to him. Listen to him. They using him like a ladder to get to the top. And when he got knocked off the game, they all climbed that shit. All of them doing good right. now because Biggie gone. Right. So now the thing was, I think 
Puffy had to do it a little bit, but with all of this, you know, if you want to do the whole conspiracy thing, like with the numbers, which I'm not getting into, but they waited 27 years, two plus seven equals nine. They try to do Pac around the whole conspiracy. When For them to come up with this, you see the stuff that's going on in Israel with the Hamas and all these beheadings of kids. This right here is to throw us off the train. So this is a distraction from the real crap that's going on. This whole thing here is a distraction because if the guy, you figure, I don't know if his name, Keefe D., you think you think if he was for five years telling all of this on TV, why just wait for now? Because this is a distraction. It's going to be time now for the voting and all of this to come up soon. All of this is a whole a, a whole ploy. Like it just don't make sense. You know what's been happening, my sister. Everything you said is nothing but facts. But recently, since the pandemic, it really ain't nothing going on out there as far as entertainers are concerned. The last mm -hmm. time you had some news popping on YouTube, it had to be like Shanquilla or somebody getting killed in Mexico. Right. Or it ain't got nothing to do with no entertainers. They got to mm -hmm. dig up some shit just to keep it interesting. Don't nobody give a damn about no Ice Spice. The last right. time you seen Sexy Red, <laughs> she on her back with her brown coochie getting pounded out. <laughs> like It ain't no substance out here no more. So these dudes... It's not. Hey, they could write books. This type of stuff will sell because it's a conspiracy. It ain't shit going on like that no more. Here come to find out, Little Wayne and Rick Ross was talking. I seen the old clip. They was in. They were signed to Inner Circle, the guys that made Bad Boys. If you watch the old clip, they was writing way back then songs for rappers, which they never got they just do for. This is Wayne, because he to ask Rick Ross. He said, "You don't mind me telling this?" Rick Ross like, "Nah, go ahead." They were signed with Inner Circle. They was writing all of these songs for all of these rappers and nobody and still didn't know who they were or anything. They never gave them their props. So it was just a whole big mess. But Sean, I love your show. Oh, I love man. you as the, I love all three of them. And you're just funny. And I love when they have their TVs turned up and you. Yo, I hate <laughs> when they had their TVs turned <laughs> up, but I'm glad you find some amusement out of that. And I got to let you know, I love you to death, Ma. And I want to thank you so much for calling in. And you can't be no stranger, welcome. man. I'm looking forward All to right. the next time, Ma. And you be good. Enjoy your weekend, too. You do the same. Up, Stay up and stay blessed, my oh, brother. No doubt, sister. Love always. Bye-bye. Real bye. talk. I'll ask you later, Ma. No Ooh. doubt. Nothing but love right there, man. Very up. She going to have a blessed weekend. She called up here, showed me some love. She going to be blessed. People still eating off a of biggie. Dudes ain't afraid to take their shirt off. It's cool to be fat, black, and ugly as ever. A lot of girls think his body weight and his titties is sexy because of biggie, man. And he also dealing with Puff riding that wave, getting some of that big juice. He's socially acceptable and all that, even though he look like a creep. You leave him alone with your kids, he ain't never gonna close his eyes. He gonna hit him with the bug eyes all night on some Tiffany Haddish, Airy Spears shit. Biggie hurt a lot of people when he was alive for having them hot bars. And as soon as he passed, they were still in all of his rhymes. Jay-Z got about 12 albums with Biggie references. Listen at this, yeah. You're not paying me and you're not respecting me. And that's the real problem. Did you, did you, did, did, all right. And that's just, that's just, that's just the beginning. All right, then there's, then there's people that try to do bodily harm with me. They will be in the house with Puff. So I'm like, it's a funny game y'all playing behind the scenes. So when people see me, they just see me turned up. They just see me agitated. They just see me aggressive, but they don't know why. So if somebody, let's just say we run down on Gilly car. We, if we got guns or whatever, where we got them and we trap Gilly. And then the next week you see wallow with me at your house how are you gonna feel yeah i'm snapping out hold on man the reason why they were snapping on mace like that back in the day allegedly is because they knew his relationship with puff wasn't right and a lot of dudes in the hip-hop game like oh that's how you climb the ladder 
that's your man's in them. Y'all, that's how y'all do. People ain't respect mates like that. Especially dudes that had to grind it out and rap battles and catch cases and come home in two years and got people calling for a record deal. People got to get shot, stabbed, or do the shooting and stabbing in order to be credible as a rapper in them Brooklyn, them Harlem streets. And here come this dude smiling all day under Diddy's arm. Hello, hello. Who this is, man? What's up, Docs? What's going on with you, Pimp Pimp? Hey, what's going on, Wine bro? Tape, man. Oh, that's what's, what's up. The homie in the building. Whatever you got to say, the floor is yours, brother. Yeah, man. No, nah, man. I'm just checking the show, man. I'm just riding, checking the show. Hey, listen, man. May situation. I don't think Mace had anything to do with it, but he was told what was going on. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He got moved to position to get in position. They moved big out of position and put Mace in power. That's how I look at the shit. Man. And then you got you got to look at Mace. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He can he can put he can put he can promote Mace more than he can promote big. You know, ladies Mace is a ladies man. Whoop de whoop whatever whatever. But uh. I don't know, man. I just miss them boys, man. I just wish this shit never happened like this, man. Be Burned up, man. It's sad. Yeah, Burned it down. It is sad, man. It's definitely sad, man. You know what I mean? And then now, you know, karma gonna come. You never know when she gonna come. So, you know everybody what? that did the wrong doing, like you said, a lot of them boys, they sacrificed them boys for the rap game to be what it is now. Very that. You know, it's different. A lot of good rappers still out there, but you see how sour the game is. <sighs> Terrible, man. You know, they did what they had to do, man. Word up. They did what they had to do, man. You had me thinking it is kind of good to not see Biggie go broke. Can you imagine that <laughs> if Biggie was doing bad like Craig Mack and he had to join the cult or some shit and he was still fat, <laughs> but he had no money in his pocket. That would have been sad to see. Nah, but I believe big already. That's why I think they took big out. Big made a power move and got his bread. He, he just made that big ass contract that he was getting. Oh and yeah, he's leaving bad boy. Sixty you know mil. So, you know, yeah, he don't need puff no more. Shit, he had this Brooklyn Mink shit going, the clothing line and all that. Big was on the mission. He had the commission going. Jay Z would have been with Biggie. You know what I'm saying? Cameron would have been with Big. So you know, Big was gonna get. He already had it. Everything in motion. Oh this man. This ain't play out the way he wanted to play out, man. Yo, yeah, bro. You gotta think. Everybody would have been with Big, man. Yo, I, I ain't Cameron never. Ryan, he would have had Lil Kim, Charlie, but they would have all been under his umbrella, huh? Yeah, the commission. Yeah, the commission. That's what they was gonna be called, the commission. So that would have been a scary you know, sight. Did he? Hell yeah! Did he, he? Did he realize that he couldn't let the bag get away? You know, he killed Big, man. Whatever happened, man, he took sacrifice, Big, man, and then shit, Buff became bigger than he ever became. And Mace was really under his arm the whole time dancing. Dancing. Next to Puff, his right hand man. You ain't know who was the king or the jester. They just both gesturing the whole time, dancing and all that. Yeah, but you always got to look at that video. It's the one video they put out together. Puff had the one jersey on and uh, Mace had the two on. Just to you let people I mean? know. Always, just to let them know, yeah, I'm the one and he the two. Shit, we're going to shake right on roll this thing. But they getting it. No. And you figure Mace's no. intellect wasn't like Biggs. Puff can't manipulate Biggie because Biggie was smart. You know what I'm saying? Mace, on the other hand, shit, only God Mace could was, help him. He had to go to the church. I think Mace was smart because I think Mace was the only one who really did get his publishing and everything back before, you know what I'm saying? He won't, his contract pan panned out right. By That's the graces of God. Out. Yeah, he could fade out. Yeah, that's what I said. It was something that he knows something. Mace knows something. Man, if it wasn't that for shit, the he up in the room with Brandy and shit, that was that's some you know. Yeah. If it wasn't for the Lord, room. I don't think Mace would have made it out, bro. He needed the Lord. Yeah, he yes he did. He seen too much. Seen now, too much. Look at everybody from Bad Boy. Greg Mack did the same thing. Mm. But shit, before he died, he had a video saying that he wanted to kill Bit uh Buffy. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Bird, you got to go back and dig into that shit, man. This shit get deep, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of dirty key players still out there. Shit, with this Keefy D shit going on and shit, man, a lot of shit about to be unraveled. But Pac said there's going to be a lot of dirt that's hitting in the dark that's going to come to the light one day. Shit is finally showing up, so.
You just got to sit back and watch and observe what's going on, man. Get your popcorn ready because this shit about to get real good. <laughs> well, big shout-out to Docs TV, man, and all that, though. Big shout-out to the Griselda team. We doing it up, you know what I mean? Boom, 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 boom. Hold on. Like, wait Dr. a minute. Miles. Hold on. He said something about the Griselda team. Wait, hold on, bro. I'll pause real quick, man. So, Griselda was founded at a pizza shop in Buffalo. That's what they talking about in the street? Griselda? Nah. It's an Italian pizza spot out there that's real famous in Buffalo, and they be standing on top of the building with slices of pizza in their hand and all that. No, that's Lenovo. That's Lenovo. Leno that's that's the spot with the dude. He used to be in the mafia and all that. Don't sign them Griselda boys to like a pizza deal or something. They signed to a whole bunch of deals, man. They shaking the town, man. You got to get the support, man. That's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm a big fan. You know what I'm saying? And I was planning on doing some documentaries about them dudes, but one of them dudes, he a Nazi or something, ain't he? Nazi? The West Side Gun, he got like Hitler shit all over the place. Oh, nah, nah, nah. It's just, you know what I mean? And he signed to Eminem? Like, what type of shit? No, Wes is a mastermind, man. He's a mastermind, man. You know what I mean? He got everything. You know what I mean? You just got to sit back. Dig into them boys and figure out. You'll figure out a lot about them boys. Man, I, I don't know about all that, but I'm going to definitely check out their music and stuff. Yo, yeah, much yeah, love to Benny the Butcher and all them dudes, man. But them going to be some hell of a documentations once I get them together on Docs Daily because I'm going to yeah. figure out what the hell is really going on. And don't be no stranger, bro. We got so much love for you. We going to holler at you later, dog. No doubt. You be good, bro. All right, Doc. You Real be soon. good, Pepper. All right, man. All right. Enjoy your weekend, man. No uh, doubt. Hello, hello. Who this is, man? Well, damn. Keefy D was around them bad boy dudes when they was out in Cali with the big booty girls, the pretty light-skinned chicks. That Puff liked to be around. Keefy D witnessed all of it. Mace on his arm. Everywhere he go, he got Mace with him. Same way Suge Knight had Danny Boy with him. And you can't tell me that wasn't zesty. Because Danny Boy came out let the world know. He rainbow from head to toe. And he was on death row. Hello, hello. Who this is, man? Yo, what up? This is Dion. Oh, Rock. what's up, brother? Yo, we, we need you to cut that off in the background. Pretty please, my brother. Already. Can you hear me? Yo, we hear you loud and clear, man. The floor is yours. Whatever's on your mind, let the people know, man. Like, is Mace the reason why Biggie lost his life? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. Puffy the reason, you know. Puffy lured Biggie to go to L.A. to work on his album when he didn't have no reason to be in L.A. after Pac died. You know, and uh, Puffy also lured Biggie to go to the party and didn't know that um, Puffy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, revealed that Puffy was getting paid that night for even getting Biggie to go to the party. Biggie didn't know it. Biggie was supposed to be in London. Kirk Burroughs was supposed to take Biggie to London. Y'all look up who Kirk Burroughs is. There was Puffy's uh, you know, I guess the guy that he used and abused, uh, working with the bad boy label, whatever. Kurt Barrett was supposed to take him to London, and he didn't never take him because Puffy threatened him to not take him. Biggie didn't know that. Biggie had a $62 million contract in London waiting for him on his own record deal. And he died not even knowing the truth. Mace wasn't the reason. Mace wasn't even at the party. Mace even said he stayed at the hotel. So yeah, you got to bang Diddy for who told Park him to Jay? stay at the hotel? I need you Mace to stay won't. here, Playboy. Mace. Don't you, matter of fact, Mace. don't you go to this party because if shit go down, I need you to stay alive, man. We about to take Whoa. it to the top. Bend Whoa. around the world and yeah, yeah. I need you safe, Daddy. Stay here tonight. Don't come out here with them wolves. What? No, that, that, that ain't what happened. May said that, uh, May said that, um, and Gene Deal confirmed it. Puffy old bodyguard confirmed that Mace found out at a basketball party early that day that um, the Bloods were looking for Puff in there, and he actually told Puff, but Puff didn't never tell Big. So Mace, he, Mace used common sense and stayed at the hotel. Brandy, the singer Brandy, was trying to get Mace to go out, but Mace was like, hell no, I was just at the party, I was just at the basketball gym with all the Bloods, and they were like, Mace, you good, we want Puff and Big. So Mace just used his common sense and stayed at the hotel. And remember, 
last week or this past week, Mace did an interview with on Cameron, and he said it was Gene Deal that went to the hotel to pick him up. So that means he stayed there using common sense. And Puffy left him in L.A. So Puffy didn't even care if he was dead or alive or whatever. You know what I'm saying? He left Mace. And Mace you going to believe, hold on, bro. You going to believe Mace, the pastor, yeah, yeah, I mean, rapper, that, murder that, Mace, don't went to the church, came back, and you going to believe Gene Deal. How many ways yeah, I mean, can he, you slice a pie? He don't okay, slice Gene this Deal? bad boy pie like 50, 60, 100 million times. Then hey, be doubling we, back. Making corrections and adding the shit, he might as well write a bad boy Bible. Right, but what we do know is the fact, you know what I'm saying, uh Puffy's a snake. We do know that for a fact. And we know the fact that, you know, all we can go off of what May said, he went to a basketball party or whatever, and when he was out there, they were like, well, You good. We don't want you. We want Puff and Big. Cause they knew that Puff had something to do with Tupac's murder. And they heard Biggie on the radio. Remember, Biggie was on the radio in L.A. the week that he died. And that's when he recited some of the Long Kiss Goodnight lyrics. So that's the re that would give them a good enough reason to want to get them anyway. But they already wanted because, you know, Sh word on the street was, you know, Suge Knight and some of his people, some of the death row artists already had a bounty on um, Puffy and Biggie head. Yo, bro, so, not, not to change the subject, but what was it about Brandy? That made these Brand. rappers want to like get with her like that. Like, what was it? I the mean, brains Brandy or too, some shit? Know, I guess so. But you know, Brandy used to date Kobe. You know what I'm saying? Brandy was getting around, being around the world. Yeah, she was getting around, bro. But you know what I'm saying? She was at the party that night. Biggie died. They had Brandy out there. Whitney Houston was out there. It was a lot of celebrities at that party that Biggie was at. And Biggie didn't even know that Puffy was getting paid for him even to show up. Cause remember, they did a Soul Train. And they were supposed to not even go to no party. But you know, Puffy Lord P Puffy coerced him just like he coerced the Crips to uh you know. I, I hear what you're saying, and I know your sources and everything where you getting all this stuff from. But at the end of the day, Mace became a mega superstar when Big was out of the picture and he was bubbling before Big even passed away. It's sort of like I mean? it's sort of like Mace. if you dealing with a chick. And she finding all that, and then a better chick come along. You gonna be figuring out how you gonna curb the first chick, and that's but what Diddy Big. Got. That's what Diddy did with Biggie and Mace, man. Mace was writing all of Biggie's rhymes. Did you know that? Mace was writing all of Biggie's rhymes. So I mean, not Biggie's rhymes. He was he was writing all the Puffy's um. Rhymes. Man, I was about to throw the whole computer out the window if you ain't clear that up, bro. Come on now. Yeah, 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 not Biggie. I'm sorry. He was writing all of Puffy's, and that's a fact. Even Puffy um admitted it. He was writing all of Puffy's um lines, and yeah, um Biggie had his own label. Guess who was on his label too? Jay Z. Even Puffy. If you look up the commission, Puffy is on the list. He was supposed to be under Biggie as far as uh, artist wise. That all Puffy sounded didn't. fine and dandy in Biggie's mind, but Puff like, nigga, you ain't never about to do a takeover on me. Yeah, and that's what he always said. He said, I'm not going to be the biggest guy on my label, but he wanted to control Biggie at the same time. So they didn't have a good relationship. They had like a love-hate relationship. Biggie said it. I mean, not Biggie, but um, Gene Deal said it. Other people said it as well. Biggie was supposed to be in London. Somebody need a, I pray that one day, not the Breakfast Club, but somebody big can um, interview Kirk Burroughs because Kirk Burroughs was there the whole while. Kirk Burroughs was, I, you know, he don't want to admit it, but he was Puffy's boyfriend. But he was also his his uh, his bitch running around doing everything for him. Puff, um, Puffy would get all the sampling from Allegedly, Kirk allegedly, allegedly. Alle allegedly, Because yeah. you but definitely, you is, definitely don't know. Yeah, wait, look, look, you talking me, like you've been around these people. You was, you was working for Bad Boy. Yeah. No, 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 but I've been How around you know? enough you, Do you eat, you been, related been, to celebrities or something? I've been around enough fruitcakes. I know what a fruitcake oh, is. So, oh, sure. so you just be around on fruity booties. And you know that no, that's I mean, the only thing you know for a fact. Neighbors, people, where that, where neighbors that, neighbors that even family. come from? Where that come from? You bro, call up here <laughs> sipping that Gary's tea and spilling it all in the chat, man. Hey, bro, I'm just putting it out there. It's a lot over there in the industry. We he know see a what lot a fruity. In he know what a fruity booty is, y'all. Yeah. We see it in the church. We see it everywhere. You know what I'm saying? He, he in the church. He in the church with it. 
Mace, Mace was, remember, Mace got caught with a transgender one time. Now he's talking uh, about transgenders, man. Sipping yeah, on that yeah, Gary's uh, tea. Pimp C revealed that. You know what I'm saying? RIP Pimp C. But I'm just saying, Diddy going down, bro. Whatever, they, Gary. They got it in the music, they got it in the music bro. Nah, man. And remember. you know what? No disrespect to you, but you talking like you got the actual factuals and everything, man. But come on now. Uh, I watch the content creators heavy, but and you know that's what I'm the saying? saddest part. Of, people be taking this shit to heart, like like it really yeah. even matter for real. You know what I'm saying? Hey, it, hey, bro, it matter if Pac get justice, Biggie get justice, and Kim Porter get justice. And Biggie and ain't all... no pastor, and Pac ain't no pastor neither. They not no apostles of the Lord. Y'all be making it seem like Pac is Jesus. He's a pastor of the streets. A pat. That's he why people ain't got shit. He was preaching on them streets, bro. That's why That's people still in the sh- people still in the struggle and all that. Uh, hey, but for real, for real, man. I, I hope Pop get justice. I hope Biggie get justice. And I hope Kim Porter get justice. No doubt, yeah, man. Justice for the, for the celebrities. When you got people like regular people out here doing bad, you out here with your fist in the oh, air yeah. for a millionaire. Hey, check this out. Justice where justice is due. They go for everybody. Hey, man. If that Justice was the case, if that was the case, if that was the case, team. everybody wouldn't be trying to be a rapper. Yeah, well, they go for anybody, not just rappers, celebrities, everyday people, even the people over there in Israel. We Justice have a, a a celebrity, um, what you call it? We we have a celebrity economy is black people, and only the uh, celebrities is benefiting. The fans is just straight doo doo. Yeah, but the fans they got some say so though. They got some say so. You know what, bro? You you said it yourself. The only thing you know about is fruity booties, man. And I'm starting to wonder what the hell is going on with my channel. Is it because I got the pinks and purples all on the screen, bro? Oh my goodness. Probably so, bro. You know I'm gonna have saying? to but switch up them colors. I figure I do hey, that for the ladies. I ain't know y'all <laughs> fruity booties be, and ain't nothing wrong with that. If that's what you want to do, hey, bro, but what you saying ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Then 50 Cent this, did it this week, call him a fruity booty. He's still talking about them fruity booties. I'm about to take a nap. Hey, man, because I'm sick of them fruity boobies, bro. They doing these bullshit killing pop like Diddy. Yeah. Oh, we heard everything, especially that last part. I'm still trying to figure out what you just said, man. I say killing um two part like Diddy, yeah, Diddy, you know what I'm saying? He 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 did that, man. And he bragged about it in the song. Bragged about it in the song, huh? Diddy dead wrong, huh? You wanna see Diddy go to jail, huh? Yeah, if he if he killing folk like that, man, you know what I'm saying? Some they gotta use him as an example. Free R. Kelly and take Diddy. Diddy in the bed with young Miami smacking her booty. That's what he doing, bro. He ain't worried about none of this stuff going on. People been talking forever. He like y'all ran out of news, whatever y'all do. He young Miami twerking her cheeks, and he think about somebody completely different, man. So, so why, so why did he start giving Clyde Davis a shout out? Man, he don't know. He about sixty years old with greasy hair. He don't care, man. Diddy in Miami right now. They used to pound them elbows back in the day. They say Diddy just got done eating a big ass steak dinner with extra shrimps. He full, his, <laughs> his fat belly is full of crystal right now, bro. I hear you, bro. Ciroc, Ciroc, Ciroc. whatever it is. He, he got Ciroc, he got all that shit. He got Ciroc, he got all that. He living large. Diddy sitting on the toilet, wiping his ass with some golden toilet paper right now. He don't care. Nah, he care, man. That's what he care. Diddy, Mason, I, had nothing to do, Mason had nothing to do with Biggie life. While you man, over everybody. there with a sketch pad, some bifocals, trying to investigate what happened with Diddy and all that. He's somewhere chilling, feeling Look good. No, no, nah, nah. he he nervous as a motherfucker. He nervous like it's all over. They said he just got interrogated. Like he was, he was brought in for questioning. That's what they saying right now in the news. Shit, man, he come up in that interrogation room looking like new money. They like, shit, we ain't never going to get him. His cologne got the detective sniffing and shit, getting all close. <laughs> And he all licking right, his lips done. with a toothpick in his mouth. He yeah, ain't never Lil going Kim to jail. Lil' Chan used to be cute back in the day. Then he I ain't going to jail. Real talk. He got too much money to go. 
if Diddy go to jail, he going to buy the whole cell block. It's going to be a bunch of inmates with shiny orange jumpsuits on, man. And telling one another, take that, take that. He going to have them niggas dancing in the hallway with the cuffs on. Man. I'm the smoothest nigga ever. I did time with Diddy. Excuse me, mom. My name's Jerome. I just came home. I just did time with Diddy, baby. <laughs> um, I was wondering if I could take you out for some champagne. You heard? Man, look, if Diddy go to jail, it's gonna be a movie. I'm talking about prison guards with suede suits on. Oh my god. Oh yeah, it's gonna be a movie, all right. It's gonna be a movie, man. He gonna be in there relaxing on the cot, looking like he in the magazine for one of them um, cologne commercials and shit. Have you thought about this? You remember the game, um, Donkey Kong? Come on, man. Don't start with that fruity booty stuff. They ain't got nothing to do with nothing we talk about. Matter of fact, I appreciate your phone call, my brother. But I oh, let you man. slide so many times, man. And don't be Justice no stranger. For bro, justice for Biggie, bro. And call back whenever you feel like it. No doubt. I'll Ooh. let you later, bro. So, so much love for him and his conversation. He called in. He had a lot of things he wanted to say. And that's exactly what I needed him to do. So shout out to that brother. We appreciate you so much. You family now. So you could call back whenever you feel like it, my brother. Real talk. And y'all could feel free to do the same thing. If this your first time watching the video, or if you've been watching it, but you ain't hit that notification button, now is the best time to do it. Because if you do, you would know the next time I go live. And that way, if you want to call in, all you gotta do is pick up the phone and we could talk it out. Okay, man, this what we gonna do. We gonna get into some real shit. Oh my goodness. It feel like I've been playing these past 30 minutes. Now it's time to get ugly because the streets been talking and people wanna know exactly what's going on with Mace and Cam Brown. What and they beefing? What decide? What made them decide that they want to get together and try their friendship all over again? Well, word on the street is since Jim Jones became very, very famous and Cameron was the one that put him in position and he tried to shit on Cam, it made Cam think about his relationship with Mace. He like, damn, Mace did put me on to the game and if it wasn't for Mace, I probably wouldn't be out here riding these Lambos and all that. That nigga Jim Jones, he was a nobody. I'm the one that put him on. He got a hit single. Now he thinking he Biggie out here. He think he Tupac when I'm the one that put him in the game. And Jewel Santana, he want to rock with Jim Jones when Jim start popping like they wasn't all up on my joint when I got it popping with the rock. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? What up, Sean Blazy? Ha, 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 but I ain't nothing funny, though. It's Zulu Man. The Zulu Man just interrupted one of the greatest sermons ever. And I appreciate Come. you for doing that because whatever I was talking about, don't compare to what the Zulu Man got to say. If y'all never heard this brother talk before, he got Dr. Umar Johnson beat. <laughs> All them other them black conscious leaders and stuff they not touching nothing he uh, got to say so zoom yeah. man the floor come is down, all yours come brother down, come down show blazing man you know i don't have no doctor with my own them fraud stuff i ain't no fraud come on now Zoo. why you always do me like that show i'm blazing i know you got something to say about mace or um cameron or somebody because that's why you call you know we waiting for you to do that Man, ain't nobody know Mace, man. I can't talk about Puff Daddy, though. And from somebody from South Africa, that's the person that we know. We know Puff Daddy. He did a lot of things, man. He made money. He made people rich. So I don't know why they coming after him. Damn, he did it big like that for Africa? Oh, no, we know him in South Africa. He gave us music, too, to dance to and flow to and all that kind of stuff. That's how we know Biggie Smalls is too Puff Daddy. Hold and on. I don't know why. Wait a minute, bro. You mean to tell me in South Africa, y'all was doing the Diddy? <laughs> y'all was doing the Diddy dance in South Africa, rapping over his beats? Where do you think he took the dance from, man? He took it from us in Africa, man. Come on now. He stole the dance from Africa? 
don't don't blame you. Don't pump that man. He took all the dance and the moves back from South Africa and stuff. Even even uh, record owners back at home, man, they used to dance in the videos too, man. He danced in the videos. He did so much, man. And I know they coming after him from all the shit that he. But that's not our business, though. The most important thing is that he brought entertainment to us. We Damn, needed that. Y'all over there, I ain't know y'all got down with Diddy like that in South Africa. <laughs> You got people no, walking I, down them dirt roads doing the Diddy dance, just <laughs> just kicking no, it in just, South Africa, man. Word up. I'm just, I'm just shocked. I'm just talking just in general, man. They need to slow down on this boy, uh, Diddy, man. He brought something to the table for us, to, you know, for the no table. doubt. He yeah. brought a big old ham to the table for South Africa. Y'all just. <laughs> I'll just love it every bite. Yeah, sure, sure. You really want to see me like that? And by the way, he smells. He smells is Jamaican. He, I think his mom is Jamaican. His father is Jamaican. Oh, he's... Hold on, man. <laughs> so he a Jamaican dude that got love for South Africa, man. What we talk about right now? My question for you is this, man. Do you feel like Mace is the reason Biggie got? Taking out the picture because if Puff didn't have a replacement, I don't think he ever would have been able to let Biggie go like that. If that's you know, what he Biggie, did. No, Biggie died for being Biggie. You know, was just too big for what he was at that age, and he got himself in trouble with a lot of things. You know, with the, with the Tupac and all the kind of stuff. So he, he he led him to his death, and all the music he he rapped about too. You know, you speak that. You know, life, life, and and death is in the power of the tongue. It's in the tongue. So he spoke that, and then he came to reality. You know, other than that, I don't think Mace was that big for him to come to a position where he can kill yeah. Biggie. That's you real, know? bro. And that make you think how people be doing crazy stuff just to go viral, taking penitentiary chances. That's how Keefy D wound it up in jail right now. But back then in rap, people was taking risk acting like they something that they not talking about what they going to do got people thinking that they these killers and gorillas and they ain't even about that life they and put putting themselves in harm's way getting in shootouts and doing all types of dumb shit just to be a star just to be a super uh, even not even a star a superstar and it came with a with a cause you know i don't, I don't want to put in maze you know at the same time we got to understand that Biggie spoke these things man, into reality. You know, he spoke these things into reality. That's what life is all about. We speak things into reality. Instead of speaking positive things, he spoke that, and that came after him. Yo, I told y'all this brother is deeper than Dr. Umar Johnson. Um, All <laughs> them Sinetta, all them Afrocentric no, brothers. Are, he broke down no. the meaning of life and the power of the tongue and all that Zulu nation type of stuff, but not on no Africa bang bottom shit. No, no, no African bombada now. Now you see now. That's not because I want to see African bombada by the way for being a, Zulu, a real Zulu because they stole the name and they they created and and uh, a group out of the name that they don't even speak Zulu. They don't know what it is to be Zulu, and they brought something bad upon being in Zulu nation. Yeah, you know, because that's real. And just like the Wu Tang, don't know nothing about no damn Wu Tang. They just thought that shit sounded cool, and they disrespecting Shaolin monks. They go over to China, get that ass beat, come back all, <laughs> <laughs> come back all crippled. ODB ain't never been the same since they went to <laughs> Taiwan. Think about it. I know you know Shala Zulu. You always reference to Shala Zulu, Sean. I know you know Shala Zulu. And you know Shala Zulu is known as a warrior. And here now, you come, here comes this person who's called, AKA African Bambada, and he calls himself the leader of the Zulu Nation, which is an, a group, rap group. That's not us. That's not Shala Zulu. That's not, that's not a real Zulu Nation. That's all fraud. They just steal. And the way, he was loving on the stinking booty in the process <laughs> with his I African shit on. He got African stuff all it's around good. the room being extra zesty. He got to smell like doodoo up in there. Because all these African nation, all these African belief system, like the, all these uh, Egyptian knowledge kind of stuff, that's all zesty stuff. <laughs> 
let's not write let's let's not Yo, lie it's all that this is stuff. It's all that but on the real man this is the origin of hip-hop man so all these rap anybody that want to do the rap thing no 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 you no, zesty, no. Or, man. <laughs> plain and simple you want to be a dj oh you that you want to be one of those type of guys okay you zesty oh you like the hip hop hip to put a rhyme together oh you you like them booties and all that that's all because that's something that's just hip and hop it up like that's stuff, the man. booty that's boys the b boys <laughs> that, that's what the b boys stand for the booty boys the booty boys hey man this thing is crazy sean but it's come coming back to the, to this main the room to this life with this info. About Yo, you getting up. a little too comfortable with your feet up. You over there digging between your toes and all <laughs> I'm that. I'm my lady. He, I'm yo, where I'm your lady at? Toes. Put her on the phone. Yeah, yeah she, she is. Yo, yeah. let me holler at your lady because you feeling a little too comfortable over there. Hello. Oh my God, damn! I ain't expect <laughs> this. Hold on, let me get it together. Oh shit! <laughs> what 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 is up? Oh hey, goodness. how are you? Y'all over there living good. You sound healthy. <laughs> oh I am. Damn, you nutri you've been eating your nutrients and you got the power in your voice, man, and it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Wow, hold on. How old is you in all that? <laughs> I'm twenty-six. Oh, back put that sexy music back on. Wait a minute. <laughs> she grown grown. Yo, Sean, slow down. That's my lady. What you doing over there, Zulu no, man? No, no, nah, Yo, nah, you nah, got nah. her under a spell. Know, you no, you got her under a spell, man. <laughs> you put the Zulu Wulu shit no, on her ass. No, she don't no, even no, know no, what's no, going no. on. Can Yo, I ma, blow out all Sean. them candles. Blow out all the candles Sean. Sean. and get out the door. I, I have a song that I told her to sing for you, oh but God. I don't want He teaching her music and shit. He got her trained. No, you know, wait, you know how it goes? Sean plays in. I'm... In love the Zulu man don't, don't call him a snow bunny. You, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, brother. No, you been, wanna say, you wanna been in America no, for five months are, and already don't call the snow bunny, man. We got nothing <laughs> no, but love for my... you, Zulu man. And don't you be I no stranger, so man. Make sure you call back next time. Real talk, Ooh. man. He don't set a, a snow bunny trap as soon as he got to America. He teaching her songs. She speaking in Swahili. She look good. She thick as fuck. Oh my goodness. How he do that? And my grandfather taught me a no. Her ass stuck. <clears throat> Can you believe this dude whipped the snow bunny out his back pocket and put on the phone? She sounded all sturdy. I'm jealous. Hey, Zulu, man, you need to call back and put me on because I'm confused, bro. But that's Negro here nor there. Uh, we here to talk about Mason, what's going on with Puff. People want to know if Mason's the reason why Big lost his life. That's a dumb question, but you figure the game so dirty, you never know how dirty it get, especially in New York City. Rats running left and right. Dudes robbing people in broad daylight. Spit in your face. And look at your mother like you better not say nothing, bitch. It been grimy in New York for a long time, man. And then when people start getting money, the game get real shady. Yo, shout out to Jay-Z. Don't navigate the streets. And he's still out here. He don't bossed up. Got a head full of dreads. Shout out to Hove, man. That that had to be a crazy ride. The rise to the top of New York City. That boy bigger than John Gotti. And as far as Diddy go, people could say what they want to say about him. People always want to go at his sexuality like that matter. Either way, Diddy is a brother. He a smooth brother. He got money. He got a whole bunch of kids. Women willing to be with Diddy. Jennifer Lopez went through with it and she been around Hollywood royalty. You can't take nothing away from him, even if you don't like him, because you ain't willing to do the Diddy thing. People question his relationships and the people he don't met 
Well, that's the whole point of trying to get rich. If you ain't, you got to meet people and mingle with people and do deals. You got to be a likable person. He don't care about the dusties. He trying to get in with some, some rich fellas and shit. He made some major moves. Yo, Diddy is like a once in a lifetime character. You gotta, you know, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Hey, what's up? Hey, this is DJ J. Oh, what's up, bro? Yo, what's on your mind, man? Man, hey, so I was just real curious, man. I'm like, every time I scroll online, I just, I see like, you covering everything like are you covering all these topics because christmas is about to come up and you want your the youtube pot to be looking really nice for christmas is that why you covering everything no bro i had to meditate like a monk like the buddhist and i figured it out you know what i'm saying you gotta have okay. conversations about stuff that people really care about man is Mace the reason why Biggie lost his life? People never thought about nothing like that before. But you know for a fact that Mace took over Bad Boy when Biggie was gone. So if that is the case, and which is not, but if it was, that mean that people shitted on Biggie. That is true. But I was just curious because I'm like, it's no way that my man Sean Blake, because yesterday I'm a big fan. I, I subscribe, I like all that stuff. But Damn. yesterday it was like, you was just live after live. I was like, oh no, something's going on. Sean's trying to, he's trying to buy me something for Christmas. Yo, you watching my pockets mega, mega, dagger, <laughs> extra, extra hard. You look, you staring them pockets inside, outside, my brother. Ooh, you all up in the, you trying to get a snack and you want a Christmas present? <laughs> Damn, he looking, he thinking about the the why. He want to know about the money. Like, is he rich or no? I'm trying to figure out the, the, Ooh, the solution. That boy been looking. He been on the lookout. Every time I do a video, he peeking around the corner like, is that Sean Blaze? <laughs> What part of the game? What, hey, what's really hey, going keep, on? Keep keep doing this, Sean. I'm really entertained. I, I I was wish every couple months was Christmas because I need you to cover everything, man. You you be definitely entertaining, man. Yo, man, you the realest of the realest because it takes for a real man to call another man and let him know that he a fan, man. And a lot of men you know don't do man? stuff like that. Brothers be hating on brothers that don't want to show nobody no love. But you said, you know what? Forget that. He the homie. I'm about to see what's going on with him. You picked up the phone and called. That ain't nothing but love right there, man. Yeah, yeah. And you know what I'm about to do? What's up, man? Oh, I'm about shit. to hit that cash oh, app. My, he, oh, my. He about to hit the cash app, man. Dollar yeah, sign yeah. Sean Blaze Dot. Sean Blaze Dot. Yo, yo, man, that ain't nothing. Yo, I appreciate you, my brother. And whenever you see me go live, I'm going to be going live a lot. So make sure you call in if you got the time. We would greatly appreciate it. We going to holler at you on the next video, man. No doubt. Yeah, you be yeah. good, brother. No doubt. Right, Take care. Though. All right, man. You be good. Ooh. Word up. Hit that cash app, brother, man. I appreciate that. And for the people watching, hit the notification button, please. And hit the like button, man. Okay, I'm about to get back into some real stuff, man. Switch it up. This is what we gonna do. All right. I want to talk about something that a lot of people don't want to talk about. Y'all stay tuned. Okay. Big was a big, big dude, but he was dealing with a skinny, skinny chick. So do that mean that Charlie bought some more of the type of chick that like fat niggas on the low? Oh my goodness. Cause if that's the truth, it's a lot of skinny chicks out there with a biggie, biggie fetish and people want to get on dudes for liking big girls. But what about 
the skinny chicks that like big boys. You know what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. Cause she was very public rubbing on his belly in public and everything, man. She was like Holly Berry and Baps. He bought her ass a fur coat. He out there slanging major meat. A big black dude from Brooklyn named Biggie. That's sound pornographic. Yo, Rich, turn that stupid ass beat off and put, yeah, put that beat on. Got me talking over some daft punk or whatever that was, man. We don't do that girly gossiping and spilling tea. We only spill Hennessy, man. Hold up. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? This is Jay from Philly. Real quick. I see you doing an episode with Charlie Baltimore. She got a... Got a baby by my cousin Chris, and he ain't big. He a thin nigga. Hold up, we got B more on it, and he talking about Charlie Baltimore. Y'all need to listen. And my my cousin Chris Lane, he got a baby by Charlie Baltimore, and my my cousin he ain't shape. He ain't no no big dude. So you called in to let the world know that Charlie Baltimore don't have a big boy fetish. No, she don't have a big boy fetish. Hey, people that like big chicks like skinny chicks too. Oh my goodness. Say again, one more time. People that like big women, they also like skinny women as well. She could like big yeah, boys. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm a thin dude. I had all thin girls all my life. My wife is a little snicker right now. And you sound like you mad about it. No, I'm happy about that, gang. You said you dealt with skinny girls all your life and your wife is a thickums? Is she like a Snickers? Like she short, she five four, one one sixty. You you call her a Snicker? Yeah, she thick, big, big, big. That's Yo, big ass. I'm taking that. Is that a Baltimore thing? No, it's a Philly thing. A Philly thing, like when. You see a chick and she looking right, like she got the right height, the right thick. She got the butt. She a snicker. She a snicker. She a snicker. I like that. Yo, I'm <laughs> taking that. I fucks with you, Game Wall. Hurry up, bro. I fucks with you. This is my first time actually seeing you. And you know what? I'm about to hit that cash at myself, oh, and I'm going to subscribe right now, Game Walk. Yo, that's what it is, man. He about to hit the cash at subscribe. Yo, and make sure you hit the notification button. But most importantly, Yo, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing that right now. Yo, man, make sure you stay tuned. Tune in, call in, and it's all love, man. Don't be no stranger. All love, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Stay, Word up. Stay up, baby. No doubt, man. Be good. We're going to holler at you later, man. Very down. And he gonna hit the cash at. That's what it is, man. I told y'all. Put that music on so I could talk my stuff, man. Hold on, where that music at? They said that I was bigger than Tasha K oh in Japan. They also said that all them other YouTube bloggers. They not bigger than me in Zimbabwe. Oh my goodness. And I, and I ain't saying that to brag or try to shit on nobody. But when it comes to Tanzania, Sean Blazerton is the man. You might be doing good in Atlanta. You probably had New York on lock. But when it comes to New Zealand, they say Sean Blazerton is superb. Y'all ain't got to believe it, but still I'm doing big things around the equator. People don't even know who I am in, <laughs> in America, but when it comes to overseas places like Dublin and Zaire, they know what's up. Anyways. Y'all need to listen at this, man. I know this is like pushing the story farther along, but Big all of a sudden dies. Cause Big, you met Big? Yeah. And so what, 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 what was that exchange like? Mace took me to Big's house, cause I guess Big was looking for artists. Um, I got to his crib. His leg was broke. I think he's in a car accident. He had two bitches in the bed. He wanted to sign another kid that Mace bought them. He, and Mace was like, nah, Cam is the dude. Cam really got it. So this he, he was KFC kinda? Yeah. 
Mace was taking them dudes up there like he was taking them to see the candy man. Remember when you was a little kid and you got to hook up with something and you wanted to share it with your friends? Somebody giving away free candy? You got a, a group of boys following you through the shortcuts and shit in the hood. And when you get there, the candy man bless y'all off with a whole bunch of candy. That's what Mace did with Cambron when he introduced him to Biggie. Like, what more do you kids want from me? He probably used to smack Mace around in his palace. Like you keep bringing children here, Mace. Like he was his father in daddy's house. And you had to pick a side, either daddy Diddy or daddy Biggie. Hey, big, I got this, my man is Cam and he got a little high 16. <laughs> he said when he came in, Biggie was in the bed, butt naked and all that with two bitches. Me hanging out. Cam come up in there. I would have switched the music up, bro. This disgusting. That that beat too zesty, but I might have to use it. Mace opened the door to Biggie House. They walk up the stairs. They got panties and shit all on the stairs. They get to the top. They hear moaning. They gotta wait in the hall till they till the moaning stop. Wait till Biggie stop breathing all hard. Then they knock on the door and come in that nasty ass room and spit a 16 in front of Biggie butt Nick. Hello, hello, who this is, man? Yo, man, this is Mr. Bird. Yo, Mr. Bird is in the building. How you feeling, brother? I'm good, man. I love to watch your show, man, on uh, YouTube, man. I be cracking up at the way how you be going off on folks, and I just like hearing you talk about the topics of the day, man. I oh, really man. Yo, I appreciate enjoy, that, enjoy. brother, man. That's what I needed to hear from you, man, to keep me going, keep on doing what I do. You heard? Yes, man. I love to watch you every time you come on, man. I like, I, I just love the way how you run your show, man. Yeah, man. That's real, man. Yeah. Word it up. And I am also trying to thank you from the cash app, you know, so I can help you get things going, man. Yeah, man. Cause I could use already sound like you knew money and everything. I thought this was Quincy Jones on the phone for a minute. Now you talking about investing into the whole brand, like half of your savings and everything. That's what I'm talking about, man. You are old billionaire and you really don't even need all that money like that. And when I get my billions, you know, I'm going to invite you over for the barbecue, brother. Yeah, man. I am. And Enjoy your show, man. I'm on here for you now. Oh, man, that's what it is, man. And we appreciate the donation. Yo, do you got anything to say about Mace, Diddy, Biggie, Snoop Dogg, Keefe D? Because it's all in the news. What's your take on well, all this stuff? Here's what I think about it all, man. Um, I just hope they get down to the bottom of who killed that man because I don't think no one deserves to go out like the way they did and when they do find out and get down to the bottom of it i hope the family that's left threw the hell out the ass yeah man because it's all they about money get them for everything they got but let me tell you bible say my money answers all things but at the end of the day there's no one above the law not even donald trump mm. no one and when them folks find out and get down to the uh, bottom of who did it, hopefully justice is served and this will teach the rest of them out there that think that they, because they're millionaires and billionaires, they think they can put out hits and have people kill and get away with it. Hopefully they make an example out of it. I don't care if they black, white, Jewish, Spanish, or whoever. But you know, if they keep going this route, they going to make it acceptable for any and everybody to be in jail. Because if you put Diddy in jail, you're going to have to go get Cam too. And Mace. They all going to be in the paddy wagon on the way talking about if you got 24 hours to live, what would you do? Where would you go? Where would you stay? Where would you blow? 
they'll all be stuck. If, uh, you know what? But the thing about it, man, I believe it's more than who, who they fan, but I just hope they get everybody involved. Everybody. Everybody man. involved. I think they but need to I leave them brothers they, alone. Well, if they leave them alone, that will mean that other people out there think about doing it. They think that they can do it and try it and get away with it, too. Man, I feel like Puff played the game the way the game was supposed to be played, man. And he was dirty for doing whatever they alleging that he did, man. But now it's probably time he got to pay the piper because there's too much information. It's too many people talking out in the open about stuff that people shouldn't be talking about in the first. It's a lot of snitching that people doing but you figure they just doing a podcast and this is what we listen to nowadays so it's okay to be a snitch it, if it's really not okay to be a snitch because you opening a world of possibilities for all different types of people following your behavior gonna have the whole ghetto behind chains <laughs> exactly man and you know i just think that you know but what bothers me, I believe those police and whoever, I don't know whether the fans knew for a long time, but why do you think they let this go so long? I mean, and especially the people that was in the car, they waited till three of them died. I mean, and now they just re relying on one person. I think they should have had crashed everybody while they were still living. Don't you think so? You know what I think, man? All them people that said they was gonna hit the cash app, now nah, and one of them hit the cash app. And that got me thinking, if you ain't got it like that, my brother, you ain't got to lie to me, man. Ain't like I'm begging, you said something about the cash app. All I said was hit the cash app. But if you can't hit it, then leave it alone. Why y'all be talking about the cash? Ain't nobody at the cash app. <laughs> I do I do apologize, my brother, but this type of stuff, it really do be irking my nerves, man. But we all is. What was you saying, bro? Yeah, man, I see it. Sean Blaze. Hold on, Sean Blaze. Now he about to say he gonna hit the cash. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. Just let it go. You ain't gotta hit the cash app, bro. I was just saying, I had to let them know that they ain't hit the cash app. Oh, no, nah, man. I'm going to talk about I watch those stuff all the time, man. And I, so you I'm is going to hit the... I tried to talk oh, him yeah. out of it, but he said he's going to hit the cash app. Oh. It's dollar sign Sean Blaze Docs, bro. And we need you to hit that cash app right now since you want to keep talking about... Hold on. Did he just hit... I think he just hit the cash... Yo, thank you so much, brother. And don't be no... <laughs> Don't be no stranger, bro. Make sure you call back whatever you feel like. <laughs> Real talk. Oh, man. Hold on. We got another phone call. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Yo, yo, what up, Sean? This is uh, Armin Leonardo, the Armenian dragon, calling out of L.A., my brother. Oh, that's what's up, man. You said you a dragon and all that? The Armenian dragon. Yeah, that's what's up, my brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Armenian dragon. Yo, I'm going to say, I want to hear what this dragon talking about. Y'all listen to the dragon, man. Man, this dragon, you know what I mean? Was the biggest fan of Mace when I was in high school, okay? I grew up with Mace. He was like my favorite rapper. I had the little mustache going on, the little sideburns and all that. You know, I had my bad boy chain on, wearing the red jacket, you know, and everybody called me Mace. So, uh, I heard you're doing the show about is Mace the reason why Biggie lost his life. Oh um, this is a little confusing because I think some of the people think that Mace was behind uh, what happened to Biggie, because I guess the word is, or whatever you got on the screen. Um, but me personally, I don't think, uh, Mace was the reason. <laughs> Yo, and what else you got to say about that? 
Well, I mean, you're talking about, you know, Mace was popping. Yeah, Mace was popping, but Biggie was big. You know, he was Biggie at the time as well. You know what I mean? Uh, from what I recall, I mean, Harlem World was like the album, you know, uh, of Mace, which, you know, I own a lot of people I know only two, but Biggie's album, Life After Death, I mean, that that's like one of the most historic albums ever. You know what I mean? So to me, it's like, I don't know why, I don't know why Diddy would, uh, would let Biggie go if he's bringing him like a lot of money. And so was Mace at the time too, but Biggie's a legend. You know what I mean? But from what I know is that Mace and Biggie didn't really like each other. But, you know, that kind of shit happens, you know, here and there. But I personally think that uh, Biggie and Tupac both had to go, you know, because they were like the heads of East Coast and West Coast, and they're causing a lot of drama through their music. And at the same time, they had that big ass beef going on, talking about shooting each other, killing each other their wife and all that, you know what I mean? So I think a higher up level kind of uh, enterprise or whatever you call it, decided that, you know what? Like, let's get rid of these two guys, you know? And that's probably why Diddy and uh, Snoop, they got together at that one award show, you know what I mean? So <laughs> kind of a, uh, you know what I mean? I, I, don't, I don't think, I, I don't think Mace had you know, no doubt. Do. You said you know. that if it wasn't for Biggie, Diddy wouldn't even be a star. And if it wasn't for Biggie, Mace wouldn't be a star neither. But with Biggie in the picture, he was overshadowing Mace and Diddy back then. Diddy ain't even, he wasn't even a rapper yet. So people weren't even trying to hear what he had to say. Mace. Exactly. I mean, who the hell was he? Biggie was the man. So with him in the picture, they like, damn, we ain't never going to be able to do what we want to do if he's still around. Because shit, we just going to be a side act to what he got going on. He got to go. Tupac did the same thing. Tupac did the same thing on the West. You know what I mean? No doubt, man. So, So it's like if these two legends are preventing others from coming up or becoming what they want to be and at the same time causing all this you know violence going on i mean you know uh two birds with one stone you know what i mean two birds with one stone man yo you said it right there that's all the people needed to hear man they took out two birds with one stone and i believe that mm-hmm. one stone is the fan base that actually entertained this bullshit when it was happening talking about i hit him up oh we waiting on the reply oh what biggie gonna say you heard what tupac said oh man it's on now it's on now yeah yeah yeah, throwing up the west side you know the east side and all that the people that you know fed I mean? into like, it and gave this shit energy that's the real problem yeah and you know back in those days you know like all the award shows you go like there's fights that break out you know like i mean it happens once in a while now but like it was pretty constant back in the day real so you know what i mean they be fighting right. at the award show you get punched in your head for the achieving something it was stupid man like dudes in jail and all that and we appreciate your phone call my brother man and don't be no stranger we gonna holler at you next time too no doubt my bro thank you Tom. Worry thank that, you man. very much you be hey, good, man, bro. love your show bro oh, no hey doubt. bro i've been watching i've been i've been following your channel you know since uh, when 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 you know you know Kawhi. hey Kawhi leonard Kawhi leonard is my favorite basketball player no doubt and and soon as i saw that video that you know D'Angelo might be his father. Nah, that's when I subscribe, bro. Oh, man. Yo, you've been a long time subscriber, man. Yo, and I appreciate that, man. You still rocking with your boy and you called in, man. That's not a beloved right there, man. Of course, no, my brother. Doubt. Of course. Just have, to, just, have, just have to give my two cents. You know what I mean, my brother? Because 
because a lot of the conversation out here, and it's like, it seems like we're going off track, you know? So mm-hmm. I just want to do my little two cents there. Word, you yeah. know, get things back on track. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so I appreciate you, man. Love your show, man. Keep doing it, brother. All right, man. It, man. Yo, you be good, man. We're going to holler at you later. Real talk. That was what's up. Yo, he been a subscriber of like for a long, long time, man. Ooh. That's that's not a beloved right there. I did that video to cope. Matter of fact, y'all come with me. We about to spin the block and we gonna come right back. Cause I wanna share this with y'all real quick. This Hold is on, the we perfect got a phone pro- call. Hold up. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Yo, yo, yo. Ooh. What the hell going on tonight? Yo, hello, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Man, it's that. The fuck? Hello? The I hell going on? Yo, yo, yo. Who this be, man? Hey. No doubt, bro. How you feeling, man? I'm all right, man. The fuck? Yo, what the hell is going on tonight, man? That That's like, that shit, that, it happened like eight times in a row. Them computers putin' camera on somewhere fucking with the phone lines. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Face. Hello. Word up. Yo, it feel like I'm in a vortex or some shit right now. And you got that on in the background. It's doubling, doubling, e- echoing, echoing. It's a glitch in the it's a it's a glitch. I'm over here tweaking and shit, cause the phone acting up, and you had that on loud in the background. My fault, my fault. I'm losing my marbles. The phone hanging up back to back, and you you sound like a computer. Is you even a human being? Oh my goodness. It's a big fact. Big man, I think these bots, the viewers is bots, the callers is bots. This some Truman Show shit. Hell no, man. Man, we, we want to hear what you got to say about the subject, my brother. I think Puffy did have something to do with killing Biggie because him and MJ, because they had something to gain. No, they wouldn't be where they was if Biggie was still alive. That's a big fact. A big fact, man. Because Big was a big dude in personality, rhyme style, charisma, and he was getting better. Tupac was dead, so he was really the man. People was looking at Biggie like he was the king of the East and the West Coast. Like, shit, we both supposed to praise this nigga in hip hop? Like, we ain't got no representative on the West, huh? Who gonna step up, huh? And it couldn't have been yeah. Snoop Dogg because Tupac was talking real crazy about Snoop. So he wasn't gonna be the king. So it was real grim at that time. Like, damn, y'all don't kill Jesus and Judas still walking the streets. You know he gotta go. Who the hell? gonna be okay with Judas roaming the streets when Jesus dead. That's yeah. what it was like for Biggie. Like that Pac was they Christ and he got sacrificed. They feel like he killed him and here go Judas, the nigga he been preaching about, he got apostles and shit out here in the streets and Biggie out there on the radio stations doing freestyles with Diddy. Boy, your shit about to get shut down. Puffy is the devil. He had that man in harm's way out there waving him like a flag in the street. Like, here you go. We had the party. It's the main event. All all Compton gangsters, Crip, Cook, whoop, whoop, whoop. They said Diddy was on top of the building throwing up gang signs with a Batman symbol. Like, come get him. That's crazy. Why did he spin away at the light? He got the fuck up out of there. It had Mace in the hotel room with Brandy getting all types of crazy booty and he ain't have to come to the party because look playboy me and you about to do a major big style we already got the tracks yeah we just gotta get rid of biggie 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 baby and that's allegedly because that's probably not even how it went but that's how it's looking and cameron and mace changed his life over to god cameron and mace is like a cancer when they join the record label as soon as Mace came to Bad Boy, Biggie, all this shit took place. As soon as Cameron got to Rockefeller, that started the whole fall of Rockefeller. Like, damn, what what them Harlem dudes be talking about? And when I get there, I'm gonna be the man. They all think like Rich Porter 
Better, better yet, what's the other dude with Rich Porter and paid in full? The dude that Alpo. was killing it. They all think like Alpo. Like, I'm going to get cool with him. We're not getting there. You know, I'm going to pop him in his head and I'm going to be the man. Yeah. They're, they're greedy. The Harlem streets, the Harlem stories, yeah. our best friends be switching up on each other because of some paper. They'll cross you up soon as they'll pop you for the bag and get out and they'll do you dirt that's a harlem thing they don't make yeah. movies about it how best friends become enemies you thought that was your man but he ain't your man he from harlem he's just trying to get the bread from you and if it's ever nah, a time you show a sign of weakness he'll pop you in your head and take the money it was one real official harlem dude that was dame and jay did him dirty come on man how did how did Jay do Dane dirty? He took him back door to go all his, his Dane back. from Harlem. He was going to get Jay and do him way dirtier than Jay would ever do him. If Dame had it his way, Jay would be an underground rapper with a fitted hat on with Jazz O trying to do a, a double duo album. Dane wanted the best from for Jay. Yeah, I'm from Brooklyn. <sighs> Dame wanted the best that. for Dame. Bro. Okay, I'm going to shut up. You called in. We want to hear your take on this. I'm giving you the floor, bro. I'm gonna, we want to rock out to what you got to say about this. All right, dude. Puffy is a snake in the grass. He's a fucked up Alpo. Cool Harlem nigga. Dame Dash ain't. Like, 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 uh, Jay-Z ain't no biggie. He's not a typical Brooklyn nigga. He's he's different. Like he don't have loyalty in his bone. Like he on he look what he's doing to Memphis Bleak right now. Like Memphis Bleak is ain't at where he's supposed to be. If his 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 mentor is a billionaire, Memphis Bleak's supposed to have some kind of money. If this is your 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 who your, said he don't? Your, um, who said Bleak ain't got no money? Bleak, who, Bleak ain't Bleak filed for bankruptcy. You forgot that? Bleak he filed, filed for, for bankruptcy. Bank. That don't mean he broke. 50 filed right, for bankruptcy and... just to keep some money in his pocket. Sometimes you got... And they you trying see... to screw you. Sometimes you got to pull a move. Bleak is not where he's supposed to be. For him to be under the man of rap. Did you the, hear... The mogul. Come on, man. Have you ever heard Memphis Bleak's raps? Of course, he ain't where he, that he exactly where he's supposed to be rapping like that. That's how he rap. He can't he, help it. He ain't spitting like Jigga. Memphis Bleak ain't spitting like no Beans. More. He ain't spitting like Mace. He ain't spitting like Biggie. You Memphis Bleak ain't no Bleak ain't spitting like none of them. He, he, he using Jay Z throwaway right raps. Jigga, give him throwaway raps. Like this, this my take that. I, I wouldn't even say that, but I'm gonna let you say that since you don't even know how to rap like that. That's Shout right. out, Bleak was the Memphis Bleak before Memphis. Look, Memphis, I call him Memphis. Memphis Bleak was Meek Mill before Meek Mill, bro. That's who he yeah. was. The screaming, right. that can't rap screaming. All right, now look. See how Jay pushed. Um, this is um, push. Um, you see how Rick Ross pushed Mick Mills. They ain't push me. Um, me. Um, Memphis Bleak like that. He wasn't pushable. He the do rag with the fitted hat over the cocked over the head. Where are you pushing that? And his name Man. Memphis Bleak. He disrespecting the whole game. How you a New York Brooklyn dude and your name Memphis? What, Memphis how? Talking about maybe, making money, pimping he hoes. He went to Memphis. He said he got his name because they went to Memphis one time and did a show. And one of the hoes at the after party said, I'm from Memphis. Um, making money, pimping hoes and style. He said, you know what, shorty? I like that. That's fly. Matter of fact, I'm Memphis. Bleak. What? Bruh. Bruh. A lot of rappers oh, fucked up names from something else. But Bleak is nice. Memphis. Really nice. He ain't never he been to Memphis one time and came back with the whole name from the whole Grizzlies and shit. He the right, John Morant of Brooklyn forever. Because his name Memphis Bleak. Uh Bleak Gangster Car is more 
valuable than Jay Z gangster card in the streets of Brooklyn, and I'm from Brooklyn. Okay, okay. So you saying that Memphis Bleak really put in some street work and got some street tales, and he actually been around some guys doing some street things? Yeah, that's a fact. Memphis Bleak name ring bells. Jay is the more swaggy businessman. He's he, he he moved up, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't even eating in the hood. He was eating downtown. But Bleak was out there sagging with the do-rag, with the chain swinging, looking left and right. In the trenches. In the trenches, like, what's about to pop off? The fact. That's gritty. That's grimy. Bleak moving like that, and he's still out there, and people still showing him love and shit. He got a hell of a life. At least he got the respect. Jigga got the billions and all that, but Bleak, he got bread in his pocket and he got the respect. That's more than most people could ask for, especially you from Brooklyn. Yeah, but I, I like being from Brooklyn, I don't think he did Bleak right like he's supposed to. Bleak's supposed to have a couple of artists on it and supposed to, you know what I'm saying? He's supposed to do. About, How you gonna I, say I'm what another man supposed either. to do? I'm not talking about feed him, but put him in positions where he could eat good. Like you, you putting, you who giving is him Memphis, little... Who is Memphis Bleak at this point? Jay-Z is a billionaire. Bleak, you had opportunity. You watched me. Take notes, son. I ain't your father. People want me to sit him on their lap. But, well, I ain't Santa Claus and Santa Claus ain't black. Nah, you ain't I, I ain't your fairy godfather because I got money. You... If you ain't figure it out by now, then what am I supposed to do with you? What y'all want, Jay-Z, to change his diapers? Nah, nobody telling you to feed him. But you put him in position where he's he's They not his kittens. He fucked that up. They not his kittens. He fucked that up. But you want to act like this is your your, your little man. You're right here. Uh, We can't got to write another rap song good in my will somewhere. Why he got to wait till you, you die to be good? Why he's not good right now? Why Bleak ain't ain't up like got got it with he's the president of something and 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 doing uh promotions and and getting commercials. Jay got his hand in a lot of shit. Why he y'all make it that? seem like Jay Z had a litter of kittens promoting Jay Z around promoting Jay Z had a litter of kittens right now. And one of his kittens is Memphis Bleak. He got another kitten, Beanie Siegel, another kitten, um, the cr- Chris and Neef and shit. Like he birthed these, like he's supposed to be their mother because nah. they came in the game. Forget they was them. rapping together. Forget them. No. Bleak, he's from your hood. You're youngin. He's under your wing. It's a Whenever bunch of people from Jay-Z. his hood. What about D nah, Haven? D like Haven that. from his hood too. Yeah, but you don't never see D Haven turning corners with Jay Z like Bleak is. Good. Being Good. Hype, Good. All of that. Bleak had it better than D Haven. Yeah, but he shouldn't be where he's at right now. So he just supposed to be, supposed to be right royalty over. forever. Memphis Bleak, hell, Memphis Bleak, the royal god of Jay Z. He's supposed to have right. rubies, riches, and diamonds. Jay Z's royal god, like, like he's Jay-Z's y'all really act like he hover. Having parties, I don't see Bleak at none of those parties. But you got big billionaires and all of that. Because I'm Bleak in none of those pictures at the parties or none of that. Jay Z is on another level. You can't get the level five if you on level one. Uh, he shouldn't be on level one. You only Jay is on level five. Bleak is on level one. Bleak gonna have to get on J level if they gonna have a relationship like that. All right, let me tell you this. A team, he's down with Jay Z. That ain't his lover, his boyfriend. They ain't even family. He's been loyal to Jay. Well, keep being loyal. Keep praising. Go to Beyonce church and be loyal. Well, why you? I know Bleak know a lot. Tell Beyonce. Tell Bleak to go to Beyonce church and pay tithes and keep being loyal. Bleak know a lot of Jay secret for him being so loyal and so what that uh, sucks for him 
At least the yeah, mother so does what? Why you not taking care of your loyalty? Why you not? Oh, like, this is what you get for being loyal to me. Bleak ain't being loyal for Jay Z's sake. He's being loyal for his sake. You know, he probably don't give a fuck about Jay Z, but he know his best to stay loyal to that. He probably, if Bleak ever popped the cat and got mad, you know how many stories he could dish out on Jay Z before he do that? He would rather kiss that man's ass just to save his own life. Yo, listen, if the if the Dame and Jay break up and Bleak would have went with Dame, what would have happened? Why? Dave, everybody would have looked at Jay like like he's supposed Look, to. Look, Tony like Yayo. Tony Yayo is loyal to Jay Z, not Jay Z, but the Fifty Cent. Tony yeah. Yayo is loyal to Fifty Cent. Do you think that Fifty gonna have Tony Yayo at them banquets and them parties where they talking big business and money? What Yayo gonna do? Rob somebody? Yeah. Spit yeah. a sixteen or tell them how great of a man Fifty Cent is? He can't take him or take Lloyd yeah. Banks and none of them dudes know where he go no more. They gonna fuck up he his learn. business. He can learn. He bring Yayo in the meeting. He in there farting, cracking jokes, and ain't even time for all that. No, I think Yayo know how to hold his, hold himself around. He know like what I'm he'd rather be with Eminem at a business meeting. I bet you he gets some shit done. Yeah, because Em is introducing fifty into to bigger people. Exactly. All right. So if somebody's giving a handout to 50, why 50 don't give a handout to Tony Ayo? That's because they got to get on his level. He 50 cent. They ain't 50 cent. He ain't got to share yeah. his gift with them all to get you. Look, you, you ought to be happy. To I know time. you. You ought to be happy. I know you. Make something out of yourself. Do so. Go do something. I ain't your father. Quit treating me like I'm God. These rappers not. be butt hurt like. That's they blood, brother. You just you met this dude in the street. Good for him. Mm -hmm. Figure out what you gonna do. He took the limitless pill. You need to figure out where you can get some limitless pills so you could be like Eminem, Dr. Dre, and 50 Cent. Until you yeah, get them I pills, commend, stop crying. I commend 50 more than Jay-Z. Look how 50 treat Tony Ayo. Look how Jay-Z treat Mrs. Bleak. I, I, I commend 50. Shit, look 50 how proof... Treat Look how Eminem treated Proof. Hold on. Right. Hold on. Rest in peace to Proof, man. He, rest in peace, but he didn't treat him. What, how he treat him back? No I comment. Don't know the story. No comment. I, I, I don't know the story. So I, I don't, don't know. Either. Yeah, I don't know the story neither. No comment. Rest in peace to Proof. Rest in peace. But I'm telling you, 50 Cent treats Tony Ayo way better than Jay Z treats. Fucking Mrs. Bleak. That's a fact. Man. He shows he shows his gratitude to loyalty way better than Jay shows his gratitude to loyalty to Mrs. Bleak. That Man. should be a that's topic because that's the truth. Don't you know the they say who, that it's lonely at the top, man? They say that for a reason. It, it is. Jay and, is all and, the way at the top. He, he ain't got, got no he top. ain't got no friends like that. When you at the Ayo. top, you lonely. Like Tony Ayo. You need somebody that that, that nigga ain't come on, man. Tony is in it for to. Tony. He in it for himself. He ain't in it for fifty. Fifty he good. He fifty good. He in, look. Look, if it weren't for 50, Tony Yayo, I don't know what he would be doing, but he ain't never going right. to let go. Even if 50 let go, he ain't going to let go. Why, why? He should. Like, I wouldn't blame him because 50 take care of This nut me. hugging is ridiculous, Jay, man. People be like, Jay, vote, like piranhas. They just want to suck at your energy forever. Go do something with yourself. Figure, like, get off my shit. And y'all be trying to justify it like he should be on his nuts forever. Yeah, yeah, he, that's all right. He's supposed to sit on that man's lap. Y'all, y'all, he's supposed to be his bitch. Oh, uh, man, no. forget no that. Man they no grown. Man, they grown. Go do something with you. They can't carry them dudes forever, brother. They just can't do it. They not supposed to. I'm pretty sure. 
I'm pretty sure Tony Ayo got other ventures. I'm pretty sure Miss Bleak got and other good, ventures. Yo, and good for them. Like, nobody said they broke. I'm pretty sure they good. But people be yeah, creating but, this notion like, oh, if, if Memphis Bleak supposed to be some... Look, Bleak supposed to be where he at right now. He he not no... no he ain't no Jay-Z. Yeah, he just go around and sell Jay-Z shit. It's and ain't nothing wrong with that. You know That's what I'm it. saying? Bleak good, yeah. Jay good, and they still living and they all doing good. Yeah, but up, man. And we appreciate you so much, man. Make sure you call back whenever you so much love for him for calling in. I appreciated that conversation. I know it seemed like I sucker punched him at the end of the conversation, but that's not what happened. When he called back, I'm gonna explain to him exactly what that was. Cause we got a, a time limit and we went over the limit and I might have to pay for that. Um, you know, my people, they over here mad because they was telling me to get off the phone with him, but he kept talking. So I showed him more love than he showed me. And I appreciate the call. And for everybody out there listening, man, how long I've been on here? And how many people, let me see how many people hit the like button. It's a thousand people. 20 people hit the like button. Oh my goodness. Man. Some people just lazy. You know what I'm saying? They've been looking at the like all night. Like I'm gonna hit it. Eating Cheetos and shit. As soon as I wash my hands, I'm gonna hit the like button. Like matter of fact, I don't even like him. But I like listening, so I'ma listen. And when it's over, I ain't gonna hit shit. It's like people that go to the movies and leave popcorn and shit all over the place. It's disrespectful, man. Y'all got my channel looking like the nasty movie theater. Cheetos and shit. Hello, hello, who this is? Yo, yo, yo. I think I might. Oh, hello. Yo, is what's this on Blazing? Yeah, yeah. Who this be? I don't even like him. But I like oh my god man can you please hold cut on. that off in the background pretty please <gasps> okay hold on okay and it's still on y'all still on over there no we got it off oh, okay that's what's up what's on your mind ma Oh, we was just calling to see if we was actually going to get to talk to you. But the last dude was on there for a minute. Man, he was talking forever. Was y'all even paying attention to what he was saying? For a minute, but then it was like, dang, dude, like, who the heck is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that kind of messed up the whole experience. He was just talking. Oh, yeah, he, he fucked up the flow. <laughs> Y'all sweating like what's going on? We all looking at each other like what's happening, man? Yes, yes, it was all audio. I'm like, what is he talking about? That was and bad. Was, it was it was horrible. Like, he was at me. What you think I need to do to prevent that? Like, what should be a technique to prevent that from happening ever again? I I think just try to ease your way off the phone. Like, you know what, brother? Yeah. You're right. We got Six to the time. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that was a lot. Yeah, that's why I couldn't take it no more. Like, at the end of the conversation, I felt slighted, so I just had to hang up a little bit, even though I told yeah, him bye. he wasn't even getting the point of what you were saying at all. Yeah, he was trying to trust now. Yeah, he was just yeah. talking crap. Yeah, man. Oh my God. I think he didn't even know what the hell he was talking about, but he just liked hearing the sound of his own voice. But thank him for his phone call, just in case he was talking about something. I didn't catch it, though. It, it mattered to him, and we listened. <laughs> A little bit. That, oh, when he left? Yes, we do. We, we fuck with you hard. Like, we're subscribers, and oh. we just wanted to say hey. Oh, what man, I appreciate that. Every last one of y'all, I want y'all to enjoy y'all weekend and make sure y'all call back whenever y'all feel like it, man. Real talk. Right. So much love for y'all. Yep. All right. Take yep. care now. Thank you. You're good. All right. Goodbye. I'm over here crying, right. looking out the window. It's raining and shit. Hello. Hello. Who doing? is this, man? What's, yeah, what's going doing, on, brother? bro? Yo, I'm Orlando from Oakland, California. Man. Orlando Great show. from Oak Town in the building, man. Yes, sir, man. And uh, I just think your topic that you have is very enlightening. It's very awareness. And it's good to see a lot of great minds coming together for one common cause and just 
you know, bringing the intelligence out of our people instead of the rhetoric. And I applaud you for that, brother. Man, I appreciate that, man, because that's the whole point of the show. Having people mm -hmm. express how they feel about stuff the way they feel about it, you know? Yes, but you you are a fair and balanced person, so that's what makes your show unique. Is but I mean, I'm just following you a couple of times, but I see that you're coming from life experience, and you're not just coming from a blogger perspective or someone that you know don't know what the streets is or like. You coming through experience, and I think that helps people like us engage more because we know you're not just doing it for clicks, baits, and likes. It's like you really talking to the people and you know like i said i don't want to hold up a lot of your call this time but man much love and respect from oakland california oh man yo that's more than enough you know words that i could use for the rest of my life man yo that conversation right there really opened my eyes and let me see that it's people yeah. that could see through all the celebrities and uh, all the bullshit yeah. you got to do to get people to even yeah. pay attention you know what i'm saying yeah somebody yeah. don't want to yeah. talk about nothing unless it's mace or one of the celebrities and shit which is cool because these people it's treated like pastors and gods. And so this is oh, basically astrology for people because they really look at oh, these on. people like stars. Yes, but when it takes the people like yourself to open up that channel of folks, it makes it more brilliant because now this is conversation we can have at home now. So it's like if someone get on your show and they get off the phone, you made they like more you made they like way more better than it was before they got on their call because you actually interact with them. So you give positive kudos back to the folks that you're talking to. And in today's generation, especially people of culture, you don't get that positivity. You don't get that feeling of, I'm watching the show. It's makes the reason why Biggie lost his life. Now you coming with things that making people open up their mind. You ain't talking about the basics, but to give us that freedom of speech and a platform to get on it, they better hit the clicks, subscribes and likes and thumbs up because you're a rarity. So, like I say again, you're a rarity. May God bless you. May you continue doing what you're doing. And, man, I, like, again, I salute you. And I'm way in on the West Coast. Like, you know what I'm saying? So keep doing what you're doing, brother. Man, yo, that's nothing but love and respect, man. I needed that call. This conversation been everything. And make sure you don't be no stranger, man. Next time I go live, make sure you call back in because this is a bunch of stuff we're going to be dialoguing about. And you a very intelligent brother, so I know you're going to have a lot of stuff to say. So don't be no stranger, oh. man. Okay, yeah, we, I'm, a, I'm a politician out of Oakland. I ran for mayor of Oakland twice. I won the summers of the Green Party. I'm on the Green Party National Credential Committee right now. I do a lot of community advocate work in politics. So that's where my experience come in. I'm 50 years old. Real so, you talk, know, Group Home County Jail, Seaway, Penitentiary, Escape the Fed. So, you know, a real one recognize a real one, you know. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll be honored, you know, catch you on and, you know, send people your way to support your uh, your mission and your movement also. Word up. Yo, y'all heard his whole resume, man. He qualified to be calling and be talking about stuff because a lot of people call in and don't even be qualified to talk about no toilet paper and be talking yeah, shit for yeah. like a whole hour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They can Google search it. Orlando Johnson, Oakland Mayor, or Orlando Johnson, Oakland Green Party, Orlando Johnson, Oakland. All my information and pop up. No doubt, man. Yes, yeah, sir. Hold yeah, on, you said Orlando to... Brown? Orlando Johnson. Or oh my bad. Orlando Johnson. Oh, yeah, nah, 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 yeah not contact. not homie. No doubt, no <laughs> yeah, doubt. Yeah. Just had to make sure <laughs> that wasn't the same person or whatever, man. Yeah, so nah, nah, no no OB. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, man. Yo, and don't be no stranger neither, man. We appreciate you and make sure you call back whenever you feel like it, brother. No doubt. Okay, I'll let you love it, boss. Word up. All right. You be so, good, man. Blue. All right, take care, bro. Hold on, y'all. Wait a minute. Hold on, is he, did he say he was a basketball player or did he say he was a mayor? I'm confused. Cause I, w I don't know which one, did he say mayor or player? 
Cause it's too um I'm over here stuck. Did he say he played for the um the the auto auto doors? <laughs> he play overseas and shit. It's either that or he be at them them barbecue competitions, man. I don't know. If he the basketball player, tell him to hit the cash app. If he the mayor, tell him I said power to the people, man. Hello, hello. Yeah. Who this hey, is, I'm the man? Polit I'm the politician. I'm the one with the glasses. Oh, the po the one with the glasses. Okay, glasses, yo. Yeah. Oh, no yeah, doubt, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we got it, because I was confused, man. Yo, shout uh, out to yeah. you, and much love, bro. We're going to holler at uh, you man, later. Much love. No doubt, man. Thank Where you, that, man? Take care. Ooh. Shit, man. They do drive-bys out there in Compton. So I can't be joking on homie. He spent the block, came back, and got in my face, and then hung up the phone. So if y'all expect me to be cracking on him, and talking bad about him, he might be the dude that popped Biggie. And called in because he listening over there sweating, got a scatter box. Got all my information just in case he got to pull a who ride. Like if this cat keep talking, he going to blow the cover. Oh, you must don't know about Sean Blazington, man. He's a mathematical genius. He has exposed all this shit now. Like I seen them do it, they pull them documentations, get to talk about them celebrities. Next thing you know, he the reason Keefe D in jail. Vlad didn't even think about no damn Keefe D until he heard the Sean Blazington podcast, man. He, he blew the whole cover, man, straight off the hinges. He over there, he walkie talkied up. Got bugs ready. He trying to come over for dinner, put bugs all in the lamp. They listening. But that's Negro here nor there. Humble Waters is in the building. Knowledge Born is in the building, man. Ms. Necessary, how you feeling? Osiris is chilling. West Jasmine W. We got some dimes in here. Reanimator. We got a fisherman in the building. Me, 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 me. A wannabe a Doja Cat in the building. Chef Cooper. All he cook is alligators, man. Y'all need to check out his channel. No chicken, no beef, no ham, just Super Mario alligators. John Lee is here. Boss of talk. That's a game he made up in his bedroom as a little kid with the rest of the kids in his neighborhood, the bosses of talk. Who else we got here, man? It seemed like I seen the same people fight. It's the same niggas. Hold on, switch the beat up. It's really only two people leaving comments. And I could tell by the colors and these some bots. I thought I was on Tasha K level until I looked in the comment section. These some bots. If y'all ain't no bots, put some heart emojis in the comment section. This the only way I could test the system because this shit ain't real. And these been the same bots for like 20 years. Am I shadow band or something? Star star is that's a bot. Um G -j tink whatever that's a bot go harder down that's a bot grace she a double bot we got bot bots and bot thoughts yeah and the travis that's a bot humble all bots with they got money bots she got a bunch of money. It's a she a she I don't know she a computer program. I'm gonna see humble waters on my taxes. Like where the fuck that come from? The hell is a, a humble waters tax? 
This is how we humble your ass and bring you back to the waters. Miss Necessary, that's a, a bot. The whole thing. How long I've been talking about these bots, man? But that's Negro here nor there, man. Okay. It's about time I get up out of here. I said all I had to say about Mace. But it's a few more things I want to say about him before I go. So y'all stay tuned. Because Mace, he joined the Lord. And he was actually a pastor at a church. He gave it all up. He felt like it wasn't even worth having. Something must have hurt him to the core. He fell to a place that was so hurtful. He needed redemption. What could possibly had happened to make him feel that way? Usually when people earn their success, regardless of what it took to get there, they gonna keep it. Mace gave his back. Like he, he ain't really earned that spot in the first place. You take another man's clothes and now you got people looking at you like that other man. Like shit. If I replace him, who gonna replace me? Oh my goodness. You start looking like fool. Like, oh, you the man after big, huh? Oh, well, guess what? I'm gonna be the man after you. You start getting old. Your show start getting stale. Next thing you know, it's some young money, some get money niggas. Some young, pretty Harlem niggas. And they looking at you like you wounded. Hold on, yeah. They had Jay-Z dead to rights. Dame Dash went and got three, four young pups and bought them up to Rockefeller and they supposed to be the new Bone Thugs and Harmony. You got Busy Bone, that's Jim Jones. You got uh, Wishbone, that's uh, Freaky Zeke. Then you got Cam, he Crazy Bone, and Jim Jones, I mean Joel Santana, that's Lazy Bone. He bought them up to Rockefeller. They rapping about, hey, ma, hey, ma. He bringing Beyonce to the studio and them niggas on the radio talking about, hey, ma, well, hey, ma, we could get it on the night. Making flirtatious songs towards other niggas' wives. How you think that made Jay-Z feel? Can't walk around extra baggy, baggy, like a Rastaman. They doing Jamaican songs, talking about shotters and shit with Buju Bonton on the hook. They'll bring in some younger dudes and try to sink your whole shit. They all in the bathroom in the studio. You go to use the bathroom in the studio. They standing there acting like they gonna rob you. And while you taking the piss, they mumbling, talking crazy about you under their breath. Jay-Z went through hell up there. And people feel sorry for Dame. Tried to do a takeover on the takeover. While Jay-Z writing the takeover, Dame Dash trying to do his own takeover. Because he think he Jay-Z. When the truth of the matter is, these dudes be college students. That's totally cool, but got connections with dudes in the street because they from Harlem. Dame will tell you, talking about he went to college and when he came home, he decided he was going to be a businessman. And since Biggs, where Biggs at? Hold on, wait a minute, yo. Well, I'll be damned. You got Jay-Z posted with Cam Braun back in the day before they got popping on them dirty New York streets they decided to get a pick real quick and Jay's fashion looking all extra bosky oh 
you know what I think? I think Jay-Z wasn't meant for the street life, but he figured out how to play the street life because he was in the streets. He was born a genius, destined to be something. And hip hop is the way he went about doing it. I feel like either way, um, Jay-Z was going to be good in life because he moved different. You know what I'm saying? He let the mystery do it for him. And that's the smartest thing a man could do. Stay mysterious, my friend. He's the most distinguished gentleman in hip hop. He give you just enough of his life that you can respect him by. He ain't doing no extras. He ain't from the TikTok era where he put all his shit all in the street. If he wanted to go crazy with the Instagram and let y'all see what's really going on, he could really shit on the whole. They'll probably have to give him his own platform to do that. Forget a um a OnlyFans. It gotta be a pay me fans. That old hip hop money. That's when they were selling them actual CDs and they was getting a cut of the money. So them checks was a lot different back then. And you figure a lot of stuff though was a lot cheaper back then too. So they got that old hip hop money, but they got a problem. People figuring out ways to get to that money with allegations, scandals, they could talk about some shit from 30 years ago, something that's completely legal today, but it was illegal back then. So you, you got to pay for it type day. They, they going to figure out how to get that money. Kanye West, they said he was broke, then turned around and had to give him the money back just to keep it from looking like he ain't completely poor. So my, he a billionaire, but he don't know where the money at. Them Kardashians got you, but what they got you believing? You should have stayed on top of your grind and figured out how to get out of them bad, stop doing all them bad deals. Yeah, you're going to be worth a billion dollars if you got a bunch of million, billion dollar deals. It's just a deal. It ain't like they cut you the check already. They trying to reach a certain quota. If we sell x amount of yeezys then you can get a profit and if we don't we not gonna be able to pay you that big margin but if you double back and do something viral then we can definitely move as many units as you want to mr west i'm a billion ain't nobody even buying them and the goofies that do buy them sneakers feet be all stank in the morning And this all alleged allegations. What did Nas do in order to get on Jigga's level? That's what we're going to talk about on the next video. Because this competition, this friendly brothery competition on got them boys rich. And that's the type of competition that need to be celebrated in hip hop, man. Nas like, nigga. Before you become a billionaire, I have at least, I got to have 500 million in the bank, sucker. You got a billy today, I'm going to have a billy tomorrow. Let's date a billionaire, them rock. Them bi they got big money, man. And you can't say that about no down south rappers. Let me explain. Okay, people leaving the video. Oh, God. No, that ain't what I meant. Oh, shit. The, the numbers is dwindling. The South, I'm looking at the equator. The South just dropped. The stock is gone. Oh, for the people still listening, let me explain what I, what I meant by that, man. Hold on, y'all. Because it ain't even like that. 
you got a lot of Southern rappers that's really, really papered up. But when you add to the legacy of what a lot of people contributed to the game, this is not honorable at all. The two lot, the college freaks, the, the freak on college boys, take a girl, a college girl and pull her drawers down and pour liquor on her titties. The college pervs, them jock boys, them frat, they, them, them brothers, they get together. They study during the day and play at night. Frat rap. Mr. Freaky Freaky Don't Tell. Hush, hush. Give you that face like he ready to bust out the damn whatever they got him in. He come home. You bring him home. He looking at your mama like that. Your girlfriend. He got a little wink about him. He getting freaky in the next door. He he in the bedroom with it. Ain't no. T this ain't honorable. It was only one hope. Hold on, y'all. <clears throat> it was only one hope for the South. Hold on, man. I need to tell it like I need to be told. When it comes to hip hop as an art form and what it's meant for storytelling, the art of storytelling, when it comes to people actually telling stories in their music, this dude is better than Jay Z, Nas. Oh, shit. You could put him in a category with Slick Rick when it comes to telling stories. And tell it so vivid like a painting. Every time you listen to one of his raps, it sounds like you watching a movie. And it don't matter what he rapping about. I'm talking about the talent. A shut down the whole as far as hip hop, lyricism. This dude, he like the GOAT. If he if he wanted to be. But the problem is he didn't want to be. And that's how this a lot of goofy shit started to come about. Cause he's so damn smart, he figured out a way to get straight to the money. And I don't blame him because he is from the A-Town and they definitely know how to get straight to the money. He cut all corners. He could have been a lyrical, all that shit, but he figured out, hey, I know how to get straight to a big fat bag. And that's what they did. And that's when all the ringtone rappers, all the Laffy Taffy dancing rappers, people cutting corners to get to a bag. Like fuck all that rapping, all that, that telling stories and all that. I'm gonna hit you with the shortcut, make you do a dance, right? And I'm gonna wear a goofy ass outfit like 3000. And it's gonna be silly. And people all across America gonna be watching like, oh, they some fools. Oh, we like the way you do that right there, boy. Oh, the way he jumped up, did the dance, did the backflip. Ooh. Did you see the colorful hat and the stuff? Yeah, he was a fuck clown. Hold on, man. And shout out to the real people out there spitting, but people been um, taking shortcuts. And I know this is still offensive and I apologize in advance, but this, this type of stuff, man, it was embarrassing. You got a man in front of a group of women teaching them how to do his zesty ass little dance and homie hit the snap back and was in there sweating. The women couldn't even keep up with his ass. He more limber than them ladies could ever be. He leaned back, uh, wow, hit us, hit a snap. And one motion, these chicks almost broke their ankles trying to keep up with this nigga. 
they had the little the little strip club he's they standing at the bar he said i'm gonna film this shit right in front of this bar right in front of this bar right in front of this bar right in front of this whoop right in front of this snap and the homies went crazy he hit that whoo he did a shimmy shake a whoop oh whoop hit that lavin taffy and america lost they shit like mama i don't want to write rhymes i don't want to tell no damn stories people like the hell with a story do that laffy taffy man to hell with what you went through in your childhood and all that was cool but we don't want to hear that shit no more back in the day you vibe out with an artist because you hear a story because they telling you what they went through in their music they telling you they pain in their music and you vibe out with them people because you know their story and you know where they came from and you know life had to be hell you hear about how god gives somebody a gift even though they forever going to be in pain. And this was like a gospel to a lot of people because we all know people that struggling with addiction, people that come up in poverty. And this brother was an inspiration. Um, people look at DMX and see their dads. They see their uncles, cousins, brothers people that's going through the same type of struggle and to see him be successful while telling his story you have a personal relationship with somebody like this shit dmx might be a bigger star than tupac if you really put them side by side yo that's some real stuff man and yo and I just say all this to say, I don't drop the ball like five, six times, man. I got love for the South, man, especially Southern hip hop. But what is the roots of Southern hip hop? Hold on, yeah. What is the roots of Southern hip hop? Is it booty base or is it UGK? Somebody gonna have to educate me. And the only reason why it may sound offensive is because I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of unanswered questions. Maybe somebody need to call in and enlighten me, man. Is it booty hop or UGK? Because if that's the case, Pimp C deserve a lot more respect than he been getting, man. That he should have been getting when he was still alive. This the OG that deserve a whole lot of credit when it comes to the dirty South and made it very up. He, he distinguished that shit. If you in Atlanta, you on Eastern Standard Time. Y'all not even the dirty, dirty. He just, that's the South. As far as I'm concerned, am I wrong for that? Because if this the origin of it, and this is the the holy grail of Southern hip hop, somebody let me know so we can properly crown this man. The way I look at it, UGK is the heart and soul of Southern hip hop, not the ghetto boys, because the ghetto boys was sounding like West Coast artists. And UGK, the only group to really come out with a Southern sound. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. All of this sounded like MC8. And um, West Coast sound like some E-40 in the Bay. You would have thought all the down South rappers was from the Bay back then. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? What up, Blaze? This is Osiris, man, from Kansas City. How you doing? Hey, what's going on, brother? I've been talking for a minute. Whatever you got to say, we listening, bro. 
Hey, man, you know you want to go through a quick history of hip-hop in the South, man. You got a... Uh, you got UGK, you had Squarface, you had 8-Ball, MJG. I mean, if you want to go way back, Suave House days, stuff like that. But that booty bass, I think that was more of a Florida, Georgia kind of thing. Like us kind of in the Midwest and middle of the South. We kind of lean more towards Texas and I guess the West Coast, you could say. You know, ain't nothing wrong. Well, shit, everything is wrong with booty bass. Let's be real. <laughs> everything is wrong with it and does it deserve any type of honor and respect not really because i mean it, it had grandmas their freak necks getting loose did it benefit the people or did it do us a disservice i mean it's in a man i don't know it was about as detrimental as drill music now that i think about it it might have been worse because this became nor normal behavior and it's still very, very normal to this day. Yeah, it, it made the, the women kind of more more masculine about sex, you know, more aggressive sexually as opposed to the old, you know, how your grandmas were, you know, with the nightgown and as more if, submissive and ladylike. As if it ain't already hard enough out here for sisters in the game, you know? Just put it all out on front street. Like, yeah, there it go right there. Uh-huh. Let the whole world see it. They be pointing at the hoes. Like, yeah, they had a camera while the rapper pointing at a girl booty while he's spitting his rhymes. Yeah, and there's so many now. You don't even point no more. Even pull the phone out. Like, it ain't even surprising. Like, damn, they got another naked one. Another yeah, they, one. they butt oh. naked and they young and they dumb and they stupid and they, they with it. And then when it's all said and done, the rapper acting like somebody owe him something because he got old in the game. Hey, like, we don't owe you nothing. You don't get no respect for the stuff you did. Like you want us to cherish you for what? You old, you nasty, you dusty, you all that. And shout out to Trick Daddy Dollars, man, because he an old black man, a Florida boy, and he speak his mind. He the Charles Barkley of hip hop. Oh my God. Steph King eat a booty. King <laughs> eat a booty. Is he honorable? I mean, I, I guess if you're from Florida, that's what I'm saying. Like, man, we didn't respect that goofy shit like that. Like, yeah, it was cool to kind of turn up to with some chicks, but like, you know, as far as just something we going to play in the ride, man, like, we, we didn't play stuff like that, man. We had that UGK bump in at MJG, you know, like more Southern laid back type of type, type. You know of what it is, man. People look at rappers like they pastors and who don't like a old southern pastor man why you think juvenile blew up the way he blew up people want to hear that down home pastor uh, people love juvie for the fact that he had died a, a pastor from new orleans trick, trick daddy one of them florida pastors that he that's real that's nasty that. with it freaking with the whole congregation people like that trick daddy dollar the nasty florida pastor then you got that's, that's people like Jay Z, them Northern, them, them New York pastors. They're very sophisticated. It should have been like that since slavery, man. That that is true. That is true. But I think to a certain extent, for a while, you did get a message and some soul in there, and then it just seemed like nah, just it's all demonic. Like ain't no more messages. Ain't no more. You don't feel it like you used to, you know. Like you could put some old music on, you feel it, feel it through your whole body, you know, like you know, to the fiddle or something. But you know, the music now, you put it on, it almost make you want to commit a crime or do something out of character. Man, this man preached his gospel in every city in America. I see you working with some mash here, some clash here, make a player want to grab that, autograph that. He came with his own form of gangster booty bass rap. He mixed it up with some Uncle Luke with some gangster, put it with that that New Orleans Creole seasoning shit. I mean, it's grandma's right now that'll get loose to that. They hear it. Back I mean, that ass up twerking. and straight bounce that booty in front of the grandkids. I like it ain't known. Man, it's a ghetto shame. All they badasses should have been in jail, especially Juvie. He a juvenile. What he doing in society making songs? Should have put his oh, no, ass behind it. bars the first time they seen him on the radio, man. It's like the music groomed us and desensitized us after a while, you know? 
like like at first it was outrageous when you know people went to a Luke concert and seen naked chicks or chicks getting peed on or, or whatever you know at the time. But you look like the cartoon just, off of the Bay Bay's kids don't grew up. Pee Wee grew <laughs> up and Pee Wee got a record deal now. He one of the Bay Bay kids, man. Pee Wee was gangster. <laughs> no doubt. And I ain't mean to cut you off, brother. What you were saying? Uh, oh, I don't even remember that, man. He do like Pee Wee, though. Like, that's funny. <laughs> he, a bar- he, he a barbecue man nowadays. Juvie, he hit you with the barbecue pit. I, I can see him with some gators on smoking it out. No, I'm talking about he do it for he that's how he make money now. He a pit master. Yeah, whoa, they the ribs almost done. Shit, he got alligators with apple and don't nobody want to eat that shit talking about he wanna make it big time. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, man. These rat look, that money only lasts for so long. Now he doing birthday bashes. What he got flyers barbecue and he gonna do back that ass up at your birthday party for 25 dollars man i don't know though i'll be wondering about the money come time because i was watching this interview with uh birdman at whack 100 birdman said he made close to three billion you believe that kind of do that i mean birdman think about made young, three billion young money wayne drake nikki all them it is definitely possible Man. I mean, the dude been around since 91. Like, he was one of the originators, too. You got to look at it like this. If you still mm-hmm. wearing your money, you must don't really got it like that. Especially if you got to wear the shit. I think that's a sign of letting people know that you don't already fucked up. You don't spent it on this, this bull. You better wear that shit. This is where your money at right here. Because when them taxes nah, roll around and all that, you making goofy decisions with a bunch of diamonds and all that bullshit, you clearly ain't set to have this money for the rest of your life. But that's like a double-edged sword, too, because then, you know, Kanye's walking around and people say he look homeless and he ain't got no money, so, you know, how how you in with that? Look, Kanye West is in a situation. He got involved with the wrong people. He doing worse than Tupac was on death row with them damn Kardashians, man. That's because Jay set him up, man. I don't think Jay had nothing to do with it. I feel like Kanye had a lot of greed and he wanted to be better than everybody at Rockefeller. He came in as a producer. Next thing you know, he's doing songs. Okay, Kanye got a little flow. Oh, he on the radio. He going platinum. Then it got to a point to where him and Jay-Z did an album together. Allegedly, Jay-Z slapped him while they was recording because he was getting ahead of himself. And eventually he strike out on his own. He all hyped up in his head with this running away with this dark twisted fantasy of him being the man. Oh, I'm with a Kardashian now. Oh, Jay got Beyonce, but I got Kim Kardashian. Oh, I'm trying to keep up with this man. Now your ass don't spun in a vortex. Don't nobody know what the hell going on. Trying to, um, you know, run to the t- Kanye West is like the mace of Rockefeller. When you think about it, he got his little shine on. Next thing you know, he in the church. You're like, what the fuck? Like, you was the man. All you had to do was keep going. Kanye done spun off the Kardashian land and still ain't made it back yet. Remember when he was at the Chicago radio station and they was like, the black girl started crying. She like, Kanye, we miss you. We want you to come back to Chicago. And he was looking at her like he ain't even want to touch her. <laughs> like he would look yeah. at her like he was disgusted. Like, I don't even want to sit next to you for real. It, I don't know. It, it, it's perspective. It, it may not have been that way. <laughs> Allegedly, man. It's just funny how people don't realize that a rapper is a pastor in the modern day world, man. Can you imagine back in the day when churches was really popping and pastors was jockeying over for audiences to hear their sermon? It was just like the rap game, except for instead of album covers, 
they actually had churches that you pull up to. Oh, it feel good in here. AC working past the handsome. Oh, it's Miss Betty go there. Oh, it's right down the street. I'll be there Sunday morning. Yes, he's the man. I'll represent for him. I'll pay his tithes. I'll show him. Look, shit, that's pimping on a whole nother level. And no disrespect yeah. to the black church. I, I, I get what you're saying, though. Oh, we, I love the choir. It's like a concert. They, they always got good food. And, you good know, they production. Just, you know, lining up to get that money away. Shit, showmanship. You know what I'm saying? And if you the man running the show, you rocking crowds. Pastors do shows every Sunday. What? You talk about a rapper doing the show. Oh, I got to do Cincinnati. Homie do a show on Sundays, and he rock the crowd on Wednesdays, too. If he feel like it, he'll probably let somebody else rock it on the Wednesday, but he going to show up. He going to be hot and steaming, anointed. He probably don't took a bath in some holy water about to make bank and bless a couple of people in the process, man. But if you think about it, though, it, it was harder for rappers, you know, even even bomb being pastors, you know, of the hood or whatever. As uh, everybody didn't always accept their message right off, or people, you know, came at them sideways. You know, a lot of people didn't understand it. Just kind of how, how I'm a little bit with the new music now, but this shit don't make no sense. So I don't, I don't know if it's on just because I'm old or it's just really that retarded. You know what they do? My bad. <laughs> people turn people into zombies, man. That's the whole point of a rapper, man. How many zombies can you make with this bullshit? You got rappers like Tech Nine. And he's basically a damn zombie. How many Tupac zombies is out there? They knocked out sleep on that damn Tupac. How many, um, who the new rappers out here? Lil Uzi Vert got zombies for days. And that's what it's all about. How how many of them? Yeah, hypnotized minds. Three, six, how many zombies they got? Oh, Dirty Dirty said it basically made people a clone. And he made a good point, too, because I used to talk about that when I was a kid. Like, you know how you can not like a song, but they keep playing it on the radio so much. Next thing you know, you sing it, you dance to it. I mean, a song you did not like, you was not feeling whatsoever, but they just played, they jammed it down your throat so much to it just became your song. And I think that's how they did with the programming. And it's all about money. It's all about money, man. Oh, yeah. Because what people will pay, people will pay for they they medicine it justifies people do a lot of messed up stuff but they got a song that justify it so they don't feel bad about it and you figure with this thought culture back in the day a woman would probably have a conscience about being the thought but now it's justified and they can live with it and cope with it and encourage more of it not even realizing what they doing to themselves nah back in the day though women would slut shame to a certain extent but since like the slut walks and all that weird stuff they just, it just don't happen no more it's just people just accept it like oh a sexy red love to go raw all the time and then you let your daughter listen to that or even if you don't let her listen to it eventually she's gonna hear it somewhere and and men suffer I, for this man they say they do it for men or whatever the case is but there's a lot of brothers out here suffering real bad and the reason why is because a lot of brothers out here is caught up in this little boyism. Lil Wayne, Lil Bow Wow. They want to be that little kid, cute kid forever with all of the swag. And they be you know grown, grown ass men out here, Lil Baby, the Baby. So it's they, a bunch of never, childish brothers out here. But a lot of them ain't never really seen men, been around men, know what men even do. You know, they was raised by a woman that had little to no responsibilities in the projects on Section 8, getting government assistance. I ain't saying all of them, but the projects are definitely a cloning factory because I'd have been all around this country and down in every city, every project, it's the same type of people coming out. Almost like some on some, they clone Tyrone type shit. Like, it's definitely a, a larger system in place, but most people don't see it because they don't need a six block radius of where they live. So a that's black the only thing they man, have to base it on. Black men that still view themselves as little boys. That's like a big thing in America. They even made the movie Baby Boy to help people see what's really going on. But people so caught up in the drama, they missed the whole message, man. That's that's because low key some 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 sons do really be their mama boyfriend. 
and that, that's what I think the premise of it was. Like, I don't know, Oedipus kind of, kind of complex thing, but I, I don't think people people reach that. These deep little boys this, grow up as little boys, but internally want to be little girls, so they behaving like girls. They out there, they not realize that they can't act and be like girls, because if they do. They gonna be in timeout, in jail. Your ass gonna be caught up in the system trying to be a girl with all these diamonds, this long hair, all this this shit. They out here. They spending all their money on clothing and jewelry with long draw. Like what man? Go buy some lamb. Get some fucking um lumber or something with that money. That's why I respect Boosie for building on his land. Yeah, he wear a chain, he do that. He's smart enough to build. Like these dudes that spend all their money on some BS. And that's the whole Damn. point of being a rapper. Like it, it's sickening, man. I, I know what you mean, but again, what, what examples have some of these guys had? Like, have, have they ever seen a responsible man? Have they ever seen somebody, you know, take care of their mom, raising their kids? I ain't saying it's it's, a, it's all, but it's a big percentage in this country, and it goes overlooked. Like you know, people always want to pull yourself up by your bootstraps, and <clears> oh, there's nothing wrong when the system literally been turned against us. I don't know yeah. how how many years. Yo, it's like this, man. Slick Rick was a storyteller, and he created a character that was unimaginably rich and royal, and all this shit. He had the London accent. He really had a character that was a, a shit. All the gold jewels, it was ridiculous. And it worked for him. But a lot of people gotta pay homage to Slick Rick. All this jewelry and stuff was for entertainment purposes. This was his stage show. This was his act. But now this is what people strive to be in real life. It's it yeah, don't make I mean, no damn sense. It's a it's a comedy show, but you got dudes that are spend a whole lottery check on a million chains and some rings. I mean, it was, it was mummies with gold tongues in in Egypt. I mean, some of the burials they find here with all the gold and diamonds. Oh I think that's just a thing black people always did. We always like precious jewels and nice things. You know, they they they, they the one convinced us we from somewhere else and we ain't got no history in or no worth in this country. But I Bruh. know deep down, we drawn to that shit. Yeah, but we got to be smart enough to realize that we in a different game. It ain't the old game back way back when, before first contact. Yeah, in Africa, you could walk around with a million, cabillion chains on because you royal and you in a situation to where you could live in abundance. We ain't in that situation in America. So it don't make no out. sense to even try to do that yet like we ain't there yet when we get there then we could do that but right now we ain't even there to be doing no shit like this man they took all our land all our precious metals and gave us jesus and slavery bro so what good is it wearing a bunch of you buying this shit that's yours this shit is royal this belongs to you royally but you're gonna give your money to them to buy some shit that they stole from your motherland What sense do that, man? Yeah. Like that they make you the, the game, ultimate, man. the ultimate sellout. Like you, you gonna undermine everybody just to have a chain to dangle in front of our faces to make it seem like you doing better than us. When the truth is, you wearing your money. And if somebody I mean, went that, upside your head and robbed you, you probably be dead broke after that. I mean, that, that that's the game, man. I mean, we we send our kids to them to get programmed for thirteen years. And then wonder why we got a problem in the community or what's wrong with the kids. Have and you talk to them for 13 years. Have you sat down, seen the lies and information that they get fed on a daily basis? You know, how man, they talk to just submit and obey. You <laughs> like, absolutely you know. right, brother. But people fail to realize that 90% of these rappers chains got chocolate in them. They don't even be real, <laughs> man. They got the Easter bunny chain on for like 50 years. And it ain't no excuse for that, man. Cause gold come out the ground, man. This earth got plenty of it. They just act like it's scarce so they can charge more for it. But trust me, it's mountains of gold in places. Literally, they just mine it out. Dump trucks. Uh, where it go? I don't know.
but it's definitely plentiful. They just, again, you make people think something scarce, you can apply more value to it. Man, I made a remark about Southern hip hop and I feel like it's a conversation that need to be had so people could have an understanding of what it is exactly and who deserved the proper homage. Me, I say Pimp C deserve uh, about 90% of the homage when it comes to Southern hip hop. And I may be wrong. A lot of people I, I, I say got, Jay Prince. I was going to say, I give it to Jay Prince. And if Jay Z and Puffy hadn't snaked them, man, dude would probably be biggest Sony records today. Him, Shug, Herb Gotti now. All the, everybody else, they got raided by the feds, you know, because like some people got hit and then some people just blew up like Bad Boy and Rockefeller. And then everybody else, the feds kind of mess with. So when it comes to Southern hip hop, Jay Prince deserved most of the homage. So it started in Texas. Basically, yeah. Hey, like that Texas, the, the Texas Memphis kind of connection. Man, ain't no connection. It got to be one or the other because Memphis, they had to see what was going on in Houston in order to really get the ball rolling. If, if we go go there, it, it started in Texas because the Ghetto Boys was that mind playing tricks on me and that kind of first Ghetto Boys album. I remember that being hot, like Wu Tang. I don't know. I, I grew up in a weird area, man. Like we listened to kind of everything. I think Nas was coming out at that time. That's back when Jay Z still had the Hawaiian shirts, you know, talking about Sophie. Yo, you know, no doubt. <laughs> Don't make me pretty <laughs> Yo, that's where we going to keep it at, man. And we appreciate your phone call. And don't be no stranger, bro. You call back whenever you feel like it. Real talk, man. You be good, man. Oh, for, for sure, man. I love for the show, sure. man. Oh, appreciate you, bro. Enjoy your weekend, too. I'll at you later, man. No doubt. Yo, hello, hello. Who this is, man? Hello. Hey, what's going on? Who this be? Oh, my name is Joseph. I'm from Middletown, Ohio. Oh, that's what's up, sister. We need you to cut that off in the background. Pretty, please. Oh, okay. Yeah, you about to go to subscribe. Yo, hello? Hey, my name is Joseph. I'm from Middle Top. Hello. And we still waiting for you to cut that off in the background. Oh, my goodness. Is it that hard? Okay. Okay. Yeah, you got to go subscribe. Yeah, I subscribe to your channel, channel. You talking to the TV? Hey, my okay. We I need you to phone. cut that off. Oh, the TV? Yes. Okay, hold on, man. Hold on. Okay. Oh my there you go. I don't. Need, I don't even want to talk no more. I'm done. I don't even want to talk. I'm through. Hello? Mm -mm. No, you had your chance. You blew it. No, I, this is my first time on it, Sean. But the thing about it is you had your chance and you blew it talking to the TV while I was on the phone. Like, who does that? I don't know. No, I didn't know what to do, Sean. This is my first time. I told you what to do. This, I told you what to do. I told you to turn that off. Okay, I did. I turned it off. See, I didn't know that though, but you know, it's, it's cool. I appreciate everything what you're doing though. You gotta everything. follow directions, I baby. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I appreciate what you're doing, Sean. I really do, man. It's a big, it's a big blessing for doing what you're doing. Word up. And by you, you know calling in and telling me, well, you ain't said nothing yet, but you called in. I know you got something real good. You got to say, so we all is. All right, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you. You know, I've, I've, I'm kind of, I've grew up listening to rap for so long. Mm -hmm. I'm the '80s guy because I think of groups like Public Enemy, Boogie Down Production, De La Soul, Tribe Called Quest, X Clan. These were all positive role models for the streets. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I think that we definitely had gotten away from that. You know, and now you've got like 
so many other things from from the 80s on to now that rap music doesn't have a leg to stay on today what do you think about that man i'm gonna need you to repeat all that matter of fact sum it up into a few words and then ask the question okay bro i'm from the 80s i like the positive 80s rap but today's rap i really don't get into it i don't even listen to it because it's it's so set up for you know rappers especially our young rappers it's so set up for young rappers to fail the reason why it's failing is because it don't make no sense and it ain't no talent involved people listen to the radio and say shit i got some stuff at the house that sound better than that people making music on their phones just messing around like shit i rap better than motherfucking megan the stallion it ain't hard anybody can do it who ain't wrote a rap or said a rap in 2023 Hip hop been around for a long ass time. It ain't like it's something new, something fresh. It's dead, and people. Yeah, cause we talking fifty years. Yeah, it, it's it's a dead product that people still trying to make work. Cause we ain't been able to figure nothing else out. Cause we ain't got no soul no more. Talk it, yep. Preach it, yep. You right. Yo, back in the day when black people had soul, it was always something new, always something like, how in the hell did they figure that shit out? We ain't had a moment like that since hip hop. <laughs> yep, we sure have it. You right, and we have it, and we never will. We don't been bamboozled by this bullshit that they put on the damn screen, man. I'm talking about people with the money, the chains, the houses, the cars, the girls, like. Who really living like that? It's a fantasy that people buy into and it's retarded. And it's to make money. It's to really market the money, you know? And that's the reason why I feel bad for young rappers today that want to get into the industry. But they are doomed to fail because it's not like that anymore than it was 50 years ago in rap music. You make it seem like you really, really, really give a damn about rap music and rappers. Are you a journalist or something or like a um like a political person? Because I'm pretty sure you could give a damn less about a young rapper. Or do you oh, really you, yeah. feel genuine about the hip hop community? Oh my <laughs> no, I'm not. A, I'm I'm an activist. OK, first of all. OK, and I'm a musician. And so I can understand music and stuff oh like that. Goodness. But the thing about it is the simple fact that Rap don't have a rap music don't even have a leg to stay on today. Is this Tarana Burks? No, my name is Yusuf Sean. You an activist. You a singer and an activist, so you like the Ohio Jill Scott or something? Yeah, if you want to call it that, yeah. <laughs> you got a blues joint and everything that you go to on the weekends. Mm-hmm. Cause I play guitar, drums, bass singing right yo that's what so you got a band and everything yeah i sure do sean yep y'all do shows we do uh yeah oh man we do soul we do gospel mm. we do funk mm. we the, do um what's the name of your band uh fruits of zion you said fruits of zion okay hold on fruits yeah. of zion and y'all from where Middletown, Ohio. Middle Town, Ohio. Hold on, y'all. Wait a minute. The only fruits of Zion is a couple of apples at the temple in the church and all that. They got a farm out there where some um some Zion Lutherans be making apples and all that. Uh -huh. Yeah, we just changed we, our band name. We just changed our band name. Not oh, too you long changed ago. the band name. Oh, so it's not yeah, the it Fruits of Zion uh, no more. Yeah, we still the Fruits of Zion. Our um old band name used to be um Locks Three Sixteen. Locks Three Six. You know, I'm not doing this run around with you because I don't know if I you know, really got Sean, a band or. Yeah, we we ain't about to do that because you you gonna have me running in circles all night looking for a band that probably don't even exist and all that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh man! Uh, but I watch all of your channels and I subscribe to you and I think you're just doing an awesome awesome job, man. Oh, you man. really are. 
No doubt. Y'all just don't know how much I appreciate that, especially like when somebody like you, an activist and an artist, and it inspired me to keep doing what I'm doing because you a great artistic type of person and you do stuff for the community. So if you could recognize what's going on, that let me know that I must be doing something right. So I really do appreciate that. Oh, man. And I'm going to continue to pray for you and everything throughout it all because this mess is crazy. They're going mm. to get puppy one way or the other. Yeah, they got to, man, because, you know, he the last domino that's still standing. But did you hear um, but did you hear about the um, um, the Crips or the blood um, also entwined with the mafia to get Diddy? Come on, man. This y'all got it sounded like a comic book or some shit. The yeah, mafia, y'all. You know what it is? People be watching Power and willing to uh -huh. run with any damn thing. Like it's possible Tommy could try to get ghosts with Tariq. Yep. <laughs> Tell me about it's it. Yeah. The, yeah. I don't know about all that. People be saying all all types of shit. You know. And but at the end of the day, who really cares about all? Yeah, yeah, that's true. And who does? And the thing about it, I mean, Diddy know his time is coming. Uh, uh, the boy know the boy know his time is coming. You know, so yeah, he definitely know. He got to know his time is right. All our time is coming. What you mean? Hey, man, bro. Yeah, you're right. Look at Keepy D. But <laughs> people be so worried about these celebrities and stuff. They don't even. You know, be looking in the mirror too tough. Ain't that what Michael Jackson tried to get people to do? Talk to the man in the mirror while y'all talking about me and my face and how my shit look and what's going on in my life. How about you talk to the man in the mirror and that way you can make the world a better place. Uh, people don't want to talk to the man in the mirror. People don't nope. even want to get to know the man in the mirror no more. They be like, nope, man, fuck this nigga. I'm about to go talk about Diddy or something. Yeah, because it reflects the person that they're seeing. Exactly, man. People don't want to deal with themselves, but they want to call in activisms over Diddy and Mason, all that. Right. Yep. Yep. And you said you was an R and B singer, but we ain't hear you sing. Look, I don't know if you could sing like Floetry or Erica Badu, <laughs> but we need to figure out what them vocal tones do. So we listening. Mm. I'm listening, bro. I'm we, listening. we want you to sing for us because that's what you do for a living. And ain't no way you should be ashamed to show the world your talents. Oh, no. I'm never ashamed. Aren't no. you in a band? Huh? Aren't you in a band? Yes. Can you please sing a little song for us? We begging. Are you serious? Right oh. now. Right now. <laughs> right, Why right. are you putting me on the why you put me on the spot right Shot. now we listening clear your throat out drink some juice we want to hit on vocals singing uh, uh, you have you ever done this before to somebody <laughs> plenty of times and people never gave this much of a hassle like either you whitney houston or no oh my goodness. all right i got you you ready mm -hmm. all right here we go Tom. you're a play in your empty home, oh, you're surrounded, but you're all alone. Every night you lie awake in bed, thinking of what you should have done instead. Put your faith in your heart, let it lead you from the start. Oh, you can always find your way. Now, if we can only let love, let love guide us home. You go. I'm over here, and see, that that was beautiful, and I didn't know that your voice was able to to flow like that. But I know there's a God. <laughs> that was amazing my sister you are very gifted and talented thank you bro <laughs> you wow. like oh lord I would, this is i would love to come see your band one day 
Okay. If you could okay. give me some tickets or something, like I fly out there because Beyonce tickets ain't even worth this right here. Nah, uh, Beyonce tickets ain't worth this one. Nah, I think. Look, I'm gonna bring my people. It's gonna be a sold out show because that deserved to be heard, man. I'm gonna do. Matter of fact, I'm gonna chop up this video and I'm gonna release the part with you singing. I'm gonna do that. That's gonna be your own whole video. What? That was the mate. That was the best part of the live stream. I for what we talk about, Mesa, Diddy. What's your name? We need to be talking about you. Well, oh, man, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Sean. This is like Star Search or something. Like I discovered something. Jay Z, he jealous of what's happening right now. You better Why? than Rihanna. Yeah, but I ain't got no uh, Sasha. <laughs> Man, forget Sasha Fierce, man. You got Paul Pierce. <laughs> Paul Pierce. Oh my gosh. Real God. talk, my and we love you to death, man. We don't want you to be no stranger. You gotta make sure you call back whenever you feel like it. I got so much love for you, beautiful. Real talk. We're gonna holler at you later. All right, you be good now. Okay, take care. You Goodbye. too, Sha. And right. thank you for ev and thank you for everything, okay? Oh man, that's real. Thank you as well. All right, goodbye. Talk to you later. All goodbye. right. Uh -huh, goodbye. Bye. Man. I've been on here. Oh my god, it's been three hours. I'm bugging. Okay, I'm about to close this out with a quick little story, and then I gotta go. Yo, type type that in for me real quick, bro. Thank you so much. Harlem World Domination. Mace was the face of Harlem. Representing it worldwide. Talking about if his album selling in China. They learn about that Harlem world. If they listening to it in Africa, they moving units over there. They know about Harlem world in Africa. The international spokesperson for the streets of Harlem. So all them fly dudes with the baby hairs and all that was checking for him. And seeing how he represent for the people. A lot of dudes in Harlem don't appreciate how he folded under the pressure and went to the church. That's sort of like a bad boy gone good or a street dude that turned into a cop. You got to be all the way with it if you're trying to represent the grimy aspects of Harlem life. And he ain't represented right. And a lot of people feel like Diddy not represented right. But at the end of the day, Diddy did something that no other Harlem dude ever did. He made a whole lot of a whole lot of legit money, man. His money was coming in legit. It's a lot of legit people out there, but they not living like how he be living. And as far as his rappers, all they had to do was rap. They didn't have to do no, um, no paperwork or build no relationships and have no connections. I don't feel like he jerked nobody. He gave people an opportunity, but he not an opportunist. And I know it sounds like I'm taking up for Diddy. That's not what I'm doing. All I'm saying is, it's good to see a brother with some money in his pocket. At least he ain't out there robbing, living under a bridge somewhere. Y'all would be happy if Diddy was living under a bridge. Then y'all to give him his flowers and talk about how much he did for the music industry. 
people feel like Mace the reason why Biggie got taken out the game. Yeah. He talking about, hold up. What, 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 what? Mace reportedly denies 50 Cent's allegation that he took Fabio Foragen's publishing rights. So he robbing his artists too? The first thing he do when he get an artist is rob them. They crooked, man. No, this got to do with anything. Are they okay? They look like they sickly or some shit. Like I have a, what they got. This look like a um a commercial for STD awareness or some shit. I want to click on it, but I don't know what it's going to do. Chuck D, Fat Joe, Rick Ross, French Montana, Method Man looking like um Buster Rhymes. How come Rick Ross look like Buster Rhymes? And they put them right up under each other. What happened? Oh my God, man. They be playing games. This is a mental, this is a simulation of some shit, man. Internet got me going crazy. Now they want me to grub hub and I ain't eat nothing all day. Yo, that freaked me out. Maybe I'm tripping. Fabio and Mace do have an existing agreement, which I won't disclose, but we will have clarity soon on a lot of issues. So Mace basically doing his artists dirty. So it is what it is, man. Now the computer froze. Is y'all still there? I gotta get out of here. This shit bootleg tonight. Make sure y'all do me a favor. Hit that like button subscribe to the channel also hit the notification button don't forget to show me some love and for the people that hit that cash app let me uh give y'all the shout out before i get up out of here man because i really really do appreciate y'all hold up yo reg get it together man because i ain't getting out of here until i get these shout outs hold up James Taylor is you out there, brother, man. Thank you so much for the cash app donation, man. Much love to you. Um, Tivius Banks, what it do, man? Yo, I hope everything good with you. Hope you enjoy your weekend. Bernard Bird, thank you so much. Tawana Singleton, hit the cash app as well. Thank you so much for your donation. Demetrius Bright, I hope everything all right with you, man. And thank you once again for the cash app. And Humble Waters still showing me love, always holding me down, always listening, hitting the like, sharing the video, and then turned around and hit your boy with that cash app. I love you to death, girl, man. I appreciate you and everybody else that hit the like button, all the people watching the video, the people sharing the video, especially the people that hit the notification button. Also, the people that join the channel, I got much love for y'all too. Make sure y'all enjoy y'all weekend. I'ma holla at y'all on the next show, man. You know you want to, you might as well subscribe. You know you want to, you might as well subscribe.